with uh, Chad Morris, so he knows a lot about this Clemson offense. He'll be giving us things throughout the day. Dave Clawson just had a great bowl win over Mike, so I don't know how that's going to work <laughs> out today on a last-second field goal miss. But uh, uh, Dave actually played both of these teams at Wake Forest. He had Mike Elko, who went to Notre Dame as defensive coordinator. Clark Lee stayed there and is, is doing it now. So Dave will talk to us about uh, uh, all the nuances of that defense for Notre Dame. Then we've got Paul Johnson ending a great 22-year head coaching career, just leaving Georgia Tech. He played against Clemson. He obviously played Dave with Wake Forest when they had Clark Lee and Mike Elko. So, uh, guys, what do you see today? Who do you think wins this game, Mike, and why? You know, I think uh, Notre Dame has an opportunity to kind of shock the country. Uh, you know, looking at this football team, uh, you know, they've, they've shown greatness in all phases, offensively, defensively. You know, they've played the four-quarter game. Uh, you know, Clemson has been dominant through the year. Uh, but, you know, yet to see Trevor Lawrence in that, in that fourth quarter having to put his team in a position to win the game. If Notre Dame makes it a four-quarter game, I think it get get quite interesting. Well, Ian Book came in against you, Dave, at first. What do you think about the game today? Who wins and why? I think Clemson will pull it out, but I think it's going to be a great football game. Um, you know, Notre Dame is very talented, very solid. Uh, Clark Lee worked for me. I think he'll do as good a job as you can do against Clemson's skill. But I think at the end of the day, uh, the skill level of Clemson on their offensive perimeter is just going to be able to make a lot of plays. Yeah, Clark Lee's done such a great job as defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. And you ran the ball as well as anybody in the country. Dexter Lawrence is out. What do you think? Who wins this game? And, and and why, Paul? Well, I think it's going to be a better game than people think, but uh, I think Clemson's going to win. They just have uh, too much talent at, at all the skill positions. And defensively, they're really, really hard to run the ball against, so, so they give their offense a lot of kicks at the can. They get a lot of turns. Well, how much does it change what happens for Notre Dame with Dexter Lawrence being out? Well, I think it'll change some because certainly he's a big run stopper in there, but they play a lot of defensive linemen. I think the Huggins kid has played some. Uh, he'll do a good job. He's another big body in there. He's not as big as, as Dexter, but he's a big guy. He's a good player. And uh, they're tough to run the ball against. I think for Notre Dame to stay in the game, they need to try to control the ball and, and, and be able to run and pass protect. If they can do that, they can make it a close game. Well, and they said Huggins is really undersized. He's only 6'3", 315. Right. So I don't know that that's undersized for most people, but maybe for Clemson, and, and Dave, he's, uh, Huggins has only been playing an average of 20 snaps per game. He's going to have to play a lot more today. If you're Notre Dame, do you run at him? Do you try to beat him down? Is, is he something that you try to exploit? Well, I think he definitely impacts Notre Dame's run game. Uh, Notre Dame's a little bit different than a lot of college football teams today, that they run a lot more man schemes. Uh, so many teams today run primarily zone schemes, and Notre Dame is going to find a way to run man schemes, and when the down block doesn't happen on Big Dexter Lawrence, those plays have a chance to be a little bit better. Well, and Mike, you, you know Chip Long very well. Uh, he and Brian Kelly make a huge decision. Coaching does matter, and they change quarterbacks from Wimbush to uh, Ian Book, uh, fourth Wake Forest game. Uh, what's happened since then? Why why'd they do it, and, and why is the change so big? You know, I think it's really opened up the playbook. And, uh, you know, it, well, obviously Wimbish was a, was a special talent in the things that he did. But, you know, Ian Book has really been able to, to attack all areas of the field. The play-action game has been huge. Uh, you know, as you look at the diversity and the things they've been able to do, you know, Chip has a great feel for the game, has, has really been able to be, uh, be multiple in the ways that they attack. And, uh, you know, I think you know, getting the ball to all their playmakers has really shown up big for them. Trevor Lawrence starts against you. Uh, Kelly Bryant's out. Again, great decision at that time for the offensive staff and for Dabo Sweeney. What do you see in Trevor Lawrence, and how do you see him handling the pressure of playoff today? Well, it's going to be interesting to see, but certainly he's as talented as anybody that we've played against in a long time. I mean, he can make all the throws. Uh, it's, uh, it, you know, it's something to be standing there and watch the ball come out. I mean, he can, he can really spin the ball, so he can, he can make all the plays and all the throws, and he's actually a pretty good athlete. He can run the ball. I know they haven't uh, used him much uh, because of a shortage at that position, but it wouldn't surprise me today to see him run the ball some on some of the zone reads. Okay. We're not sitting on the field today, but uh, you're Dabo Sweeney. Uh, we're, we're sitting here with Brian Kelly. How do coaches feel right before the kickoff? You want to throw up? You're, you're, you're anxious but excited. Oh, well. tell, tell people the truth. How, how do you feel? Well, I think it, it varies, but, uh, it, you know, you got the butterflies. You're nervous. Uh, you're trying to run through every scenario in your head. 
what might happen and, and it, you know, to make sure that you've covered everything and uh, just ready to get the game started and hope that you can go out and play your game. Uh, you know, try to control what you can control and go out there and put your best foot forward. And, uh, but if you're not nervous, you probably uh, aren't paying attention. Dave? I mean, the anxiety level right now is at an all-time high, and I think right away you just want to make sure the headphones work. Yeah. <laughs> More than anything what, else. Once those headphones work, then it's, it's game time, and you just hope in a game uh, like this that you don't make one of those fatal mistakes early, yeah. that you don't make a mistake in the kicking game or, or throw a pick six or, or give up a, a kickoff return for a touchdown, all the things that we did in the bowl game against Mike. <laughs> and, Mike, how do you start the game? We, we used to sit there so – many hours trying to think about the first play because the first play was so important. Are these coaches doing that, or is, is the script more important? What's important you know, at this point for the head coach? You know, it's, it's, it's all about getting off to a good start, like, like Coach Clawson mentioned. But you, you want to you wanna go out there and make sure you allow your playmakers an opportunity to impact the game early. And uh, you know, I know that's something that you know, both sides, both, both football teams are going to try to do uh, to get their quarterbacks feeling good. Uh, you know, two very aggressive defenses that they're going to face. And so you want to you get, get the sticks moving and uh, you get off to a great start. And, and I know that both these, both these teams are are going to be prepared to do that. I asked Coach Royal once, who won three national championships at Texas, and the stadium's named after him. I said, Coach, did you get nervous before the game? And he said, it was six months after I quit coaching before I realized that not everybody chokes and throws up every Saturday morning <laughs> during the fall. So, yes, you're a little bit anxious. You're excited, you're anxious, but you, you also want to send a confident message to your team and your staff. And that's very important because they're watching every little move that the head coach is making. So body language at this point is, is so important as, as well. Is there any chance that because we all in the media have talked about Alabama and Clemson since summer, is there any chance that Clemson is overlooking this a little bit and everybody's talked about all the BCS problems with Notre Dame, their 2012 loss to Alabama, so they've been given no respect in this game. Is there any chance that Clemson's not going to be ready to play? I mean, I, I have no doubt Clemson will be ready. I think Notre Dame is probably a team that comes in with a little bit of chip on their shoulder. Uh, they're not here by accident. They've run the table. They're 12-0. and 0. There's not one player on that Notre Dame team that was there in 2012. So to the kids in that locker room, that game's meaningless. I'd say the same thing. I think that when you get to this point, uh, if it was a normal bowl game, they're, they're, that possibility might be there. But, uh, I mean, I think they all know what they're playing for. And, for both these programs, that's what they've been pointing towards uh, since the start of fall camp, and now it's here. And I can't imagine that both of them won't be jacked up, ready to play. Mike, yeah, you know, you see battle-tested, battle-tested football teams, and uh, you know that's one of the things that I'm, I'm excited to see today. How Notre Dame uh, you know, comes in and, and approaches this game. You know, you have a, a team that's won in a variety of different ways. They've played well on offense. They've played well on defense. Special teams have been been key in in, cr in critical situations. And so um, I know Clemson's going to be ready, but I think this Notre team, Notre Dame team, has something uh, you know that, that could could really shock some people. Got a couple of minutes here before we start. Let's talk about coin toss. We always thought you wanted to win it and then defer, get a three and out, get a short field, try to get points, and then score before the half, and then get the ball to start the second half, and you have a 14, 10 to 14 point right. swing at halftime. Thoughts on coin toss? I, I think you defer in a game like this. You just let the anxiety get out a little bit, and to go to halftime knowing you start with the ball in the second half, I always thought is, a, is an advantage. Uh, the same thing. I was always kind of an offensive coach, so I wanted the ball first to start the second half to, if we had the momentum, to kind of keep it going, and if we didn't, to kind of change it back in our favor. And I think in a game like this where you don't want to make a mistake early, as they said, uh, I would, you know, I would defer. Yeah, most definitely. If you, in this situation, you want to you want to know in every situ, every situation that's that's going to show up uh, what you need to do in the second half, and uh, you know being able to start off with the ball that's going to be uh, uh, you'll really be able to adjust your plan of attack. My last game at Texas, we were playing in the Alamo Bowl against Oregon, and Mariota just happened to get healthy for our game. Yeah. He'd been out for about six, so the coaches talked me into being aggressive and taking the ball first and. We threw an interception on the first play, and they beat us 30 to 10 or something. So uh, I, I'm, I'm with you guys. So, uh, guys, let's get ready to kick it off. Let's have fun. Uh, I want your honest opinions. I'll give mine because uh, fans that are watching need to understand exactly what happens on the field during the game and what happens in this film room. So uh, let's have fun and watch. 
do you come out aggressive if you're on defense early, or do you play conservative to find out what the game plan is going to be for the other team? Like, I, I think this is a game you don't want to lose it in the first five minutes. So see what they're doing. You haven't played football in over a month. Uh, that's what's so out of sync with these bowl games is in the season you get in a rhythm, you're playing every week, and all of a sudden you don't play a game for a month. So just stay in the game for the first five to ten minutes, make your adjustments, and then if you're going to go after a shot, do it. Well, you all just played. It, it's also a huge part of coaching when you're talking about that month. How did they handle the month? Are they prepared? Uh, are they tired? Did they do too much? Did they lose the game last week? Uh, we're about to see. Let's kick it off. What do you think about the new rule with the uh, fair catch on kickoffs? I think it's a good rule. I think that, uh, you know, we'll, it'll take a couple of years to get all the data in to see if it helps injury-wise, which is what it was put in for. But, uh, but I like the rule. I think it's uh, a positive. Okay, Notre Dame's got the ball. Clemson's on defense. Let's see <laughs> if, uh, if, if Clemson comes out and gets after them early, which they have a tendency to do, or see if they uh, – Try to play a little bit more conservative. What do you call first, Mike? What's your first play call? You know, you want to have something that's a, a quick hitter. Uh, so, you know, maybe a, a, a slip screen to the to the flat, a, a quick spot, or uh, you just something to get the quarterback in rhythm uh, with with what we're trying to trying to see. Well, they ran it right at where Dexter Lawrence would have been on the first play, which is interesting. But again, a, a quick hitter up inside. Right away, they went three over three to the trips up to the field. And uh, the new safety for Clemson, number 19, uh, is one of their best tacklers, and, and they're going to try to get him involved in the run support. There's a quick high, high percentage you know, you know, throw for the quarterback, trying to get Book in rhythm. Uh, I would suspect you're going to see a lot of different formations here early. You know, try to get a, a run through of what, what, how Clemson's going to align defensively to, to be able to set up that next play, uh, that next series as, as we get rolling here at the beginning. Well, and here's Dexter Williams, who, who's in motion. Uh, just jumped the gun a little bit. A lot of anxiety for the players, too. Got to settle them down. So do you scream at him now? Do you yell at him or you pat him on the head and say, hey, no, it's, settle down? It's yeah. part Take of a the, deep breath. It's part of the anxiety of this game of not playing for a while, and you let him play through it. I think it's oh, balls out. These are things you can't have happen early. You know, the, the penalty, you know, putting the ball on the ground. In a game like this where you're playing such a great defense and defensive players, you, you, can't, you just can't hurt yourself. You kill yourself and you put yourself in first and 15, and now you're second down in 15. It really limits play selection. So uh, what do you do now at, at second and 15? Do you try to get 10 back? Do you try to get five back? You do. You want the positive play. You don't, uh, you don't want to put the, put the ball in jeopardy. You can see there with the quick hitter, uh, quarterback draw uh, you know, built in. It's a really good play call. You just want to get half back and make it third and manageable. And, uh, you know, just to, to run a play, you got to do something to slow down the pass rush. And a, a quarterback draw, getting those guys up the field, and the heck of a play by the corner for Clemson. Right. It'll be interesting to see if Notre Dame can, can get some traps or something going. Clemson penetrates uh, so much and so well up front defensively, and they create a lot of negative plays and tackles for loss. And Looks like Clemson's playing man coverage. Do they come after him? Three man front? Uh, it looks like a maybe yeah, some max amp three two. rush yeah. and three deep under yeah. and that's played a little Tampa two there looked like great play by Book though it, it was you know, seeing, seeing him seeing able to get out and and, and move uh, you know do some things with his legs that's going to be something that's going to be big in this game uh, you know obviously Notre Dame the very first series you know you have the penalty the fumble um, you know, put themselves in a tough situation and then the drop pass on third down but uh, you know. Uh, that's the big game anxiety, and yeah. that's something that they're going to have to calm down on the sideline and uh, you know, get, get ready for this next set. Yeah, but that, that's an example in the first drive. You have their, their best tailback, Dexter Williams, make a mental error with the false start, and Boykin has excellent hands, and he just dropped a gimme first down. So they just got to settle in and play. Well, and, and Paul said it. One of the keys to this ball game is be who we are. We were good enough to get here being who we are, so don't try to do too much, and that might have happened in that first series. Uh, what's interesting, though, is I really think Notre Dame does a great job of running the ball to the tight end surface. And they just, every single snap, they not once had an inline tight end. So they're, they're very much going, uh, they're spreading them out and trying to see their numbers and, and get the numbers right in the box. Now, again, Trevor Lawrence, young freshman, first time in playoff, be smart. 
no question. And you're here putting formation into the boundary. Right. Uh, you're probably going to have a spot screen out here with the, the option to run. Uh, you know, it's a you want to make sure he gets off to a great start and calm his nerves. That's a nice play here by Notre Dame. Again, you know, gap integrity. They stayed right on the line of scrimmage. Nobody got knocked off the ball and was able to play right down the line and put him in second and long. It's one of those things, if you're not lined up correctly, that ball would just go immediately to Amari Rogers into the boundary. Quarterback draw, quick screen. Uh, get rid Looks of it like. quick. Three step maybe. Just get rid of it quick and get a completion under your belt. Notre Dame is bringing an extra one or two. Mm. Oh, what a play to get loose up. Yeah. See the athletic ability there. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see going to an empty set. Uh, Notre Dame bringing pressure, you know, off the uh, off the, the weak side there to the boundary, uh, being very aggressive in their top. call. Uh, I think everybody's within 10 yards of the ball when, when it snaps. So uh, very aggressive. So they're bringing six, but what well, athletic they're, they're, play. They're dropping out the tackles there, and, and that's one of Notre Dame's empty checks. When you went empty against them, they had a cover zero check in there, and uh, Trankle is an excellent player, the guy that blitz from the boundary there. And we could save that one and draw it up at halftime, too, and draw if you if you have a chance there when we see something like this. So huge third down. Mm. You know, here you see both offenses in third and long. Uh, you in their in in their first series. It's obviously what you want to stay away from. Uh, both defenses play, coming out, playing, you know, starting fast. You see the line game here by Notre Dame, get, being able to get quick pressure. And this game's going to come down to the one on one on the perimeter. Clemson is phenomenal athletes out there, but uh, you know, great coverage by the by the Notre Dame defender. Well, what's interesting that that play is the the receiver there for uh, Clemson Higgins usually goes to the boundary. And he was matched up against Troy Pride, who's a South Carolina high school player that I'm not, so, I'm not sure Clemson recruited him. So I'm sure that was a, uh, a matchup they had worked on before. I think the thing that stuck out to me on that first series is you can see early on that Notre Dame's not afraid to play man to man. They kind of walked up and matched up with the outside guys and brought some pressure early. And uh, now they've got great field position, three and out. and. Uh, at the ball across midfield here. Well, and it's interesting that Clark Lee has manned up, but you were concerned about whether they could or not with a skill at Clemson as defensive coordinator at, uh, at Notre Dame with love and, and pride, but at the same time, he brought an extra guy. So they're going to play. He did, like. and you can do a lot more of that stuff when you're not worried about the quarterback running the football. Yeah. You know, so that's as much as you're worried about the perimeter matchups, how Clemson has changed – uh, with, with Trevor Lawrence is there's not as many designed quarterback runs and it gives you a little bit more freedom to play man coverage yeah. than if you ran the ball more. Dave, could you draw that up a little bit for us there just on the field because we're taking a little break here. Just kind of show people what... Yeah, if uh, I can get that, that uh, last play up there. Well, I don't know if I can pull it back or not. I'm not okay. that good at this. I used to be good at this, but I, <laughs> now that I'm coaching again, it's, uh, it's, it's changed. Um, let's see if we can get it back. You're going through those both those first series. You know, you see the thing that's that showed up to me, other than the, the third down, the Tampa look that uh, um, that Clemson came back with. I mean, everybody's everybody's really squeezing the line of scrimmage. I think both coaches expecting, you know, expecting the quick throws. It's you know, con, you know, obviously contested catches uh, or contested throws for these quarterbacks. But uh, you know, there, there's going to be some shots that are going to be thrown downfield. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is the game within the game right here. Is that. You know, the, the corner for Notre Dame that has probably got the most accolades is Love, and he is usually up here to the boundary. And T. Higgins is probably the best receiver that Clemson has. And the matchup that they're working down in the field here, here is they're getting Higgins matched up on, on Pride. And uh, like I said, they're playing man coverage, but they're also running a little stun up front and try to clog up the lanes and not give up a delayed quarterback draw. And I think Clark is probably a little bit more confident doing that this game than he would be if they were playing Oklahoma today. You know, that, that probably is something that if they win and play Oklahoma, maybe you don't get away with. And it'll just be interesting, uh, you know, can Clemson win those perimeter matchups? Can they make big plays? Because I think the fact that Notre Dame Let's look right at this away. right quick, and then we'll go back to live too, Dave. Yeah. That's where they the, came after him? Yeah, and this is, I mean, this is a check Notre Dame has every week, that that's, 
you know, they'll, they'll go cover zero versus empty, and that's always built in. So really good field position for Great. Notre Dame with a short punt. Yeah, and that's like they were one of those trying grid to take routes. a shot. They were getting ready to take a shot there, I think. And every week, Notre Dame's going to have three or four different ways of how they're going to get a shot play. And this is what we call a grid, that you run out to one side and you bring the guy from the, the, uh, the other side, the slot here, uh, Fink. And uh, this is one of the way Notre Dame tries to produce big plays in the pass game. But they had an opportunity there at the home run post with safety match to climb. And, uh, you know, but you know, that's one of these things early in a game, you know, having the quarterback, the confidence, you know, of the of, being, of being able to pull the trigger review. there and, and really push the ball down the field. Clear. Just over there. We got it. That looked like max protection, too. So they, they were trying to probably a little concerned with a, a more inexperienced offensive line trying to block those big guys. I think this ball's probably out uh, as you look at the replay. Yeah. It could be Clemson's ball. Dabo hustled down to try to make sure that they got a review. Uh, But I would say the same thing on the other side of the ball that, you know, Book can run, but they don't run a lot of designed runs with them. So, you know, seeing Clemson play a little bit more man coverage here uh, isn't surprising. That ball's out. Yep. What, what would happen, Paul, in Death Valley if this happened? <laughs> <laughs> You, you probably I think. <laughs> you, you probably you probably couldn't hear the the review whatever the uh -huh. call was. Well, and, and this is the reason that Notre Dame's got to stay balanced too. They can't block those guys up front if if they know they're going to throw the ball. So they're going to have to run it some and 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 try to keep at least the defensive Clemson guessing with what they're going to do. And so far, it's, it's been a, a game of mistakes and missed assignments and... You know, the things that, that Notre Dame can't do, you know, you had the, the ball on the ground here twice, you know, depending on what the review says, but, uh, you know, putting the ball on the ground twice, having the, the false start penalty, you know, a missed opportunity here on the shot on first down, um, you know, with the home run post. Uh, it was that pretty solid, solid protection at the beginning, but... After review, the player fumbled the ball prior to being hey, this down. This is what drives you nuts in these games is you can't wait to They're start the, the game. The now all these long line. delays in these replays. Yeah, the uh, ball's out. Grand. I thought it was. Yeah, here we go. It's uh, 11 the ACC and be a replay official. Right. <laughs> you know, you, now you've got to make sure available. That, huh? It's between that or a greeter at Walmart. I had not even that. Well, and look, here, here's what happens with your with your fan base, too. You're sitting here, so the Notre Dame guy now hates the world. The Clemson guys are all pumped. All right. This is, a, this is a critical series here for well, Notre Dame defense, how they respond. You know, you've got to settle down. Never, never. Knowing Clemson, I think they'll take a shot here now. Yeah, the, the quicker Clemson can make this a perimeter game, the, the more it plays into their hands. And here you see uh, Notre Dame too high, and there you go. They're bringing in the linebackers, and there it goes. There's that quick throw that if you're not two over two, the ball's going to go over there immediately. And those are the plays that give a young quarterback confidence. Bringing field pressure, you know, soft coverage in the boundary, trying to drop out the end. Just great decision by the young quarterback, getting the ball out on the perimeter. You know, what's surprising here is they bring the linebacker in the box there, and they're dropping the end. Usually you just leave the linebacker out there, and the – and becomes the, the hole dropper. But that's seven easy yards. Seven easy yards and a missed tackle. This is it. This is, that's Clemson. Get the ball on the edge. There's Notre Dame's going to outnumber the box, and they're going to find their edge matchup. This is what I'm talking about with the young quarterback on the field out. Yeah. That's yeah, how quickly arm. that that's thing impressive comes impressive for him. <laughs> I'm telling you, he can make all the throws now. What an arm. Quick. Strong and accurate. Right. And we just saw him uh, avoid a, a rush, so he's obviously athletic. How tall is he, Paul? Uh, he's got to be 6'5", maybe, 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, he's an he's a athletic kid. And is he, uh, is he strong built or is he really thin? Well, he's, he's like a, you would think a freshman would be, but uh, he's you know, shown a lot of resiliency and a lot of toughness because he's, he's you know, hung in there pretty good. 
Uh, and ETN's been their go-to guy to take pressure off oh, by, yeah, he's, Lawrence, right? He's just a fantastic running back. I mean, their, their toughest game of the year this year against Syracuse. I mean, ETN just took the game over. And this was interesting with the corner blitz, and ETN picks it up, and Clemson rolls away from right. it. So blitz from the top. It's interesting on third and two. The interesting call. Well, I think part of it is probably that tight split. That the split there was inside the numbers, and that might have been an automatic for him. And here's where you feel like they go to Hunter Renfro. I do. Third I think down, he's, uh, you know, he's been a big player for, you know, three or four years for those guys. And so Renfro's at the top. I just think. makes plays. He's at the he's top. top on now, the of course, you got a shot down here with their best receiver, best one man. One. So who knows? Renfro's now one on one That's at the other top. They go screen, and they're going to make it. They got some eye candy for us to start thinking right. about outside with fades. Well, I can promise you, if they continue to line up like that, you're going to see some fades. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. but it's not bad to put it in your best player's hands on fourth down and two, too, no. with ETN in space. No, but if if Notre Dame can hold up on the perimeter with their corners, it'll that will keep them in the game. And they're trying, aren't they? They're just a little bit off at the top, but pressing down at the bottom. You can see Clemson, you know, a variety of different formations. They're, they're here, they're starting with formation, uh, you know, passing strength into the boundary, motion and back to the field, seeing the, the Notre Dame adjustments. Uh, you know, all this is going to set up the, the, the later shots or, or you know, tr trying to find the right numbers. Well, man, they've got to do some RPOs or something because you saw the safety rock down and either you got to crack him from outside or do something because he's the extra guy in the box that's unaccounted for and they can't block well, him. This is a game. formation that really gets their nickel into the box and makes him an inside fitter. Clear that one, Dave? Yeah, that, see that? When, Clear that one? Yeah. When, the when, circle? Yeah, when, when Clemson puts the trips into the boundary, they're getting Notre Dame to really remove their best second-level defender, which is Tranquil. Okay, up there, and then that puts really their nickel or their rover into the inside fit. We're well, really impressed with Trevor Lawrence's composure and his ability to make someone miss and still be able to throw the ball. So here we go again. We got double stacks. They're two over two. Trying to spread them out, right? Yeah, and just if there's an easy throw, give it right away and get those quick yards. If not, now you're going to extend the routes. And there you go. And that's six man pressure again. Once again, you get the third and long, you get the pressure look, man coverage. I think Notre Dame's doing a really nice job here early in the game, uh, forcing the contested, contested catch, contested throw, and getting pressure on the young quarterback. Even got a little game up front with the uh, defensive end stepping up and coming around to his left. That's a five man rush, and the backer was rushing the cover on the back. We always felt like scoring first it was huge, too. I don't know why. Maybe it was just the momentum, the confidence, but at Texas, usually when we scored first, we won the game. You know, I think that's big. Uh, I think this this series is big for, for Notre Dame uh, in their defense, you know, to be able to hold hold Clemson, who, who had a conversion on a third down, you know, to be able to, to get us to hold them to a field goal after the short field turnover. That's that's a that's a big stop for them. Uh, you know, now it's just time for both teams and really both offenses just to settle down. I mean, there's, you see a lot of things, you know, a couple mistakes. Uh, both quarterbacks have gotten pressure. Dave. You, you played both of these. You played book. What's your first impression at the start of the game? I mean, it's really hard to get a feel yet. I don't think he's in a rhythm yet, and I don't think Notre Dame has really established anything yet. Uh, the thing that book does is he executes the offense really well within the design of the play, and, and right now they haven't been able to stay on schedule yet. And I think you're going to really see him, if they can make a first down and start changing tempo, That'll allow him to really start playing well. If you're Chip Long, what do you change after the first couple of series because it hadn't been smooth? You know, I mean, getting the ball in a short field, you had the first play, you take a shot. You know, they, they'd shown to be playing, playing the safeties down. You understand that call. You probably want to come back you know, here and try to get the run game established. You know, you probably throw a couple different formations at them. Uh, whatever your top runs are, uh, you know, really start to push, uh, you know, getting, getting that aspect of the game going. Paul? 
Thoughts? Yeah, I think that uh, they got to try to find a way to stay on the field. Uh, the turnover on the first play of the second possession, but you know, you've played half the first quarter and one team has one first down, the other one has two. And neither so, one thrown the ball downfield much. There's right. one incomplete deep ball. And realistically, when we talk about it, the one turnover led to a score. Exactly. That's, that's been the, the only game. difference. So it's, uh, it's just interesting now that Notre Dame has come in now with two tight ends on in line. So the, the first series was all spread. Now they're in their 12th personnel. And this is their big play. The pin and pull to the boundary. And it's a great job by the corner slicing under there. You see the boundary pressure, the, the boundary pressure, boundary move it from uh, – from Clemson, you know, they, they know that this is going to be an area that, that Notre Dame's going to try to attack them. And you see the corner blitz, uh, very first time that they uh, they get this presentation. And, you know, they are all over it. Yeah, that, that right there, that's Notre Dame's play, that if they get that thing going, watch out. And that was a great call by Clemson. It, it's really interesting with Clemson that one of, a lot of times Brent Venables, who's an excellent defensive coordinator, you'll see guys – holding him back on the sidelines. He holds his call as long as any coordinator we play against. He is gathering information until the very last second. So a lot of times you'll see Clemson's defense adjust late because he's getting the call in so late. The zone read right there, it's probably an iffy give. Should have, maybe should have pulled the ball. Now you're third and 10 and they're there bringing somebody. A yep. little underneath screen. There we go. Great call. Oh my gosh. You see the third and long situation, you know, uh, Clemson dialing up the pressure, you know, uh, great little slip, slip screen, to, uh, you know, trail route by the running back. Uh, that's a big a big play in the game. Notre Dame definitely needed yeah. this. Really caught them in a zone fire. They, you know, they're only rushing four. But yeah, really, bringing them. That's a good call against that play. Not yeah. a great call. Uh-oh. There we go. That's another thing Notre Dame does. I mean, th those receivers for Notre Dame are, are some big bodies. You know, Boykin is 6'4", 230, and they'll give him three or four chances a game to just go up and make a, a big body catch. You both played Clemson. The That's only the concern the anybody one. has talked about all year the is their secondary. They're really athletic. What, what would you say? Is that their concern today? Just because of the matchup with Notre Dame's perimeter. I mean, Claypool, uh, Boykin, I think uh, Fink is a very underrated slot. And the problem is you, most teams can't get to Clemson secondary because you can't protect long enough to get to them. And, and that's where I think Dexter Lawrence not playing uh, is another impact on this football game. I think that that's probably uh, key. The, uh, you know, they haven't been able to exploit it much. South Carolina threw the ball for a lot in the last game because they did get time, but if the quarterback can get the ball out, then uh, it'll, it could be interesting to see if they can cover. Team speed for both these teams is just unbelievable. Yeah, off the charts. Simpson doesn't let you see an opening for long. His, his space is filled pretty quickly with them. Little flood route. I'm telling you that he is an underrated player. I mean, everyone any, talks about... I mean, I'm, I'm talking about Fink. I mean, everyone Fink. talks about yes, Renfro. It's a nice pickup by the tackle on the corner fire. Fink is a really good route runner. I mean, he, he was a guy we were very concerned about. Very good pickup yeah. to the right, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a nice pickup. Well, this has been a great series for it has. For you see, you, you see, uh, no, Notre Dame starting to get in rhythm. Uh, you know, there's a great job by uh, you know when they had the the conversion immediately coming back with tempo. Uh, you know, here just a little smash concept, but uh, you know, quarterback they you know, Clemson stacking their three over two on both sides, opening up the middle for the for the quarterback draw. Now they're back to the spread. Now you try to pound them a little bit. You know, it's it's inter interesting to see how Notre Dame's attack. You know they they're going with the 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 open sets. You know coming back with the condensed. You know start off the series with the 12 personnel. Uh, you know you know ace look, and then you know as they're as they're 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 attacking in a variety of different ways. Here they're getting attached tight end back in uh, uh, back in line, and so uh, you know getting a lot of information here in the first couple series. It's really interesting. He started with two tights this series, so trying to get more back to who they are. Oh, got him. Got him in the middle. Oh. 
Well, it was a good good pass off by Clemson. Right, they pick up the back trying to leak out. I think. You know, here's and what's the receiver at the bottom? Yeah. A little snag and go. There's a little snag right here and go, and it looked like right wow. there he's open. Now, look had pressure. Well, one of the things that's hard to see right there, he's got the pressure when he's coming open. <laughs> if he could have stood in there. Hey, what? That's a. That's a knife to the heart if you're an offensive coordinator. <laughs> you worked touchdown. on that play oh, you're eight screaming times and it in the last matter. month. Oh, great tackle by Clemson. You can see here's a second, third down where they've uh, they've tried to the, the screen play, and you know obviously wanting wanting to get the ball out of out of Book's hand. You know you're in the red zone. You, you should have a, a good opportunity yeah. for points. Um, Looks like he's going to sprint to the right. Sprint protection throws back. I tell you, the, the one thing about Clemson that you notice is, for as talented as they are, even on units like this, man, these guys on PAT field goal block. I, I always think that's an indicator of how hard a team plays. Is what is their PAT field goal block? Because. Something bad just happened. You gave up a touchdown, and, and this is where what Dabo's done is so impressive, is these kids play really, really hard. He, he gets great players to play with incredible effort, and, and I thought their team was one of the best PAT field goal block units we went against just and because was, of the effort. That was something you coached as a head coach. Yeah, I, I, too, yeah so I, I notice it, and those guys are factors in those units too. And the other thing you notice about Clemson is their best players, Lawrence and uh, Wilkins, those guys are on three special teams. I mean, they're also on their PAT field goal block team, and they're on their punt team. And they're also running backs. Yeah, so they, uh, he's gotten them to have a very unselfish mindset, and it really shows up on their special teams. Okay, let's look at this one, uh, if we could draw this. Yeah, this is kind of a, a quarters or a two deep beater, is that you're trying to get this tight end to clear out the safety. And then you're having him running under, so the corner passes it off, and then that thing splits the safety. And uh, the, the route works exactly like it's designed, just the Clemson pressure, like so many times, gets to it, that the tight end is, gets collected by the safety and he's wide open. And I yeah. guarantee you that that route was worked on probably about 15 times in the red zone skelly. Yep, the outside linebacker blitz gets right in his face. If Book can throw it there, it's a touchdown. So many little things that happen in a game that nobody's aware of till you start watching that video the next day. Yeah, and the defensive end there did a great job of selling the pass rush to get that tackle to widen, which allowed the linebacker Inside. to get on an edge. Yeah. No, that's, that, that's, that's a great one. So we go back to the, the, the call on third down and 10 by Chip Long, the underneath uh, screen, uh, which is a huge play mm -hmm. to give them the three points, basically. And then they come back and get the interference call. Then they have this call. But Notre Dame can't miss many of these type guys that are going to be wide open and win the game. They've got to take advantage when they have somebody open like that. So coaching, we got him open, but we didn't execute it. Yeah, and, you know, you, you look at it, you know, how, how many times Notre Dame's going to be able to get into the red zone. You know, they're going to have to produce touchdowns, especially against explosive Clemson offense. Um, you know, uh, you see the plays and the opportunities that present themselves, but, you know, being able to capitalize, uh, you know, with a little extra, little extra time on your, on your protections. You know, Clemson, what I think is doing a great job is mixing up their blitzes. They're, they blitzed, they, they've blitzed into a, into a couple of the, uh, uh, the Notre Dame plays, but, you know, also, you know, they've, they've, they've changed up a, a couple of variety of their different looks. So, it's going to be a fun chess match as this game progresses. But if you're Notre Dame with 431 left in the first quarter, you have to be happy. Sure. you got a tie ball game. You, your kids should be confident that they can play with them. Um, and you're, you're sitting here in a position where you've had a turnover and given up a, a, right. a field goal, but your defense stopped them. And to your credit, Dave, they're talking about outside. They've stood up man-to-man -man so far. So I tell you, that, That's the part. We've played Notre Dame the past two years, and – their corner play from last year to this year really improved. Those guys are both pride and love are outstanding cover corners. And if you have two corners who can okay. cover, there's a lot of things you can do. Huge play. Now, now they got to, if they're going to win this game, they're going to have to, they're going to have to put six there. And you have to score touchdowns, yep. right? You can't. So let's, let's see if this is. It's the same challenge that Notre Dame just had. Now you got a red zone turnover and Clemson's got to hold them. Oh, it's tight. out. Unless it hit the out of bounds and it doesn't look like the official thinks it did. 
in is out. We've got a new replay official here. What do you think, Paul? Uh, I think that one's out too. <laughs> that, that one, that one's not hard. I'm not even sure they're going to review that one. Let's see if it didn't touch the out of bounds. Might have hit his head and caught the, the out of bounds line. Paul, since you're not coaching anymore today, uh, ooh. ooh, close. Guy's looking right at it though. Well, that is so close. Almost like the Clemson guy kept it back in bounds with his hand. Right there, he swatted it back in bounds. Seems like they'd have to review that. Got to look at it because it's going to be really close. And right. it's amazing, too, how you're sitting there as a coach on the sideline saying, come on, man. Mm. Come on, man. So, Paul, next year, what are you going to tell Greensboro Command Central on this one? Uh, I don't know. I'm telling them I'm getting ready to try to hit it with a hook over that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I oh, think one of the things short, that's, short that's impressive is, you know, you watch that, the Notre Dame kickoff cover, <laughs> and, you know, you see, you, you see uh, uh, Chase Clay, Claypool being the young man that's recovering, uh, you know, starting start receiver for you. Yep. Uh, Drew Tranquil, you know, down, you know, on coverage. I mean, these guys, uh, you know, it takes all three phases, and that's the thing that Notre Dame has shown up, you know, you know throughout this year, uh, you know, shown up big in, all, in, in each of them. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's close. That's not the angle they need, though. Right here it is. Ooh, looks like he's on right there. Yeah, I don't know if you can overturn that one, though. The that looks like it's <laughs> out of bounds. Yeah, it's out of bounds, I think. Boy, that's close. I know one guy who's hoping it's out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Number 10. Yeah, right. The There's return no guy. question yeah. he's hoping it's out of bounds. And he told Dabo coming off the field, Coach, it's out of bounds, yeah, it's man. Out. We're good. All right. We're, we're I was good. Down. We got either, either that or I was down. Yeah, or I was right. down. There, that's it's it's hundred percent one or the other. Paul, do you like officials any better now that you're out of coaching? <laughs> you know, I, I, I always uh, had a good rapport with the officials. Ball is out of bounds. <laughs> According to the hook. Yeah, going down. Please reset the game clock to four. Uh, that's a that's a great that's a huge break for Clemson now, there. And it's one of the reasons I think it is good that we have instant replay because you want the yeah. team that plays the best to win. Right, the game. you want to get it right. I'd like for them to go a little faster sometimes, but this is why you have it. Yeah, but it game. also gives it confidence to the special teams for Notre Dame because they were so close to having a game changer. Yeah, and you look at the field position here. They're, field here uh, Clemson's got to start off at the at the 13 yard line. This is going to be a big big uh, series for Trevor Lawrence, and you know. Oh, interesting to see how Clemson's going to establish the run game. You know, Notre Dame is is stacking the box with an extra hat. Uh, you know, this will be this this will be a big series in the game. Right now, you got two over two to the field, and if it stays that way, these are a lot of times the formations that if Clemson gets this look, the ball just immediately goes to the slot, and and they do a great job of staying in stable formations and just having the quarterback manage edges. Brian's fighting him. He, he's trying to he's trying to get something for later too. I mean, it's a, he's negotiating. Clemson's cussing him. Doing him a cussing. Here you go. This is what I was talking about with the quarterback running the ball, and it doesn't surprise me in this game. You can see the read on the five technique. And they're loading the guy that's responsible for the, for the other player. If we get a chance, we can run that back. I can kind of show you what. Okay, let's watch this play, and we'll see if we can get back to it. Okay. So you got second and seven, made three on first down. Hey, what Notre Dame's playing a, a lot more too deep mm -hmm. than they normally do. That, it's that's always been more of a changeup for them, and they've mixed it in there three or four times already. Hey, Paul, we can draw this one up very quickly. Okay. Yeah, you can see here's the Reed guy coming down, crashing down to take the guy, and they're loading with a slide on the linebacker who had the quarterback. Corner made a nice play. The guy came to stalk him, and he got inside on the quarterback to say. Say that if he'd have got the crack here, you could see that would have been a big play on the half field safety. Clear him. Got it. 
Big third down and seven. Don't turn the ball over. Be smart, young quarterback. Oh, what a throw. And to Renfro, your oh, third down man. guy. He's the that third guy. down guy, I'm telling you. He's and breaking them down last year. He right. was always the third and fourth yeah, down guy. Yeah, he's, they he's a key him. guy. So he's in the slot at the bottom. Three over two. He is just, he's magic on that down and distance, man. I mean, it's just. Knows how far to get. Got great hands. And the other, beats the sticks. The other route they run that looks like this is they'll run mm -hmm. them the drag route on the outside of that guy that crosses the middle. This is it. This is their this is their quick free yards, right there. If you don't line up right away, bang. Oh, and so, so many young receivers may be short of the the first down marker. Rimfro's six inches past it, right? And he he knows what he's doing. But it, it's interesting how Clemson uses all their kids so well. Amari Rogers is the guy they like to get those quick throws to and let him do things with it after the catch. So far, Clemson has not been able to run the ball up front. No, they're 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 struggling to get that going, and I think for them to win the game. You now you see what? you see here with the with the adjuster into the boundary, you know, being able to play the run game. Yeah, that's where you got to continue those spot throws, and you know, sometimes you get uh, it gets boring, but you got to take what the defense gives you. Um, you know, did it did a really good job on it first down, then second down, uh, you know, gave the ball to to the extra hat. Third down plays get your owner off the field. Second straight, oh, was third and seven, man now three three again. five. I'm telling you, this kid's so impressive. This, the ability to move, you know, really good coverage by Notre Dame, but uh, you, can see, you can see the ability that, uh, that you know, Lawrence has. It's, he's going to be a special player for a long time. I tell you, just, so far Notre Dame is holding up in man free. They really are. Yep. And he, if you go back, Coach, to the wide, you can see them having right here, they're doubling uh, Renfro, just like Coach Johnson talked about. You can see the linebacker, you know, peeking. Renfro was trying to run the little whip route here back inside, but uh, Tranquil's there to, to, to the take bottom. that route away. Yep, right there, double teaming him at the 35. Right. And that's where you got to come off to, to, to find your one-on-one -on -one with the dig in behind it. That's, if you can just rewind that, that, that was one of those things I was talking about earlier is that you have – Christian Wilkins, who probably could have been a first-round pick a year ago, he comes back, and look at him. He's in the shield and pump protection. And he's had a fake there. He's a running back. He, he does whatever. And, and wouldn't all four of us say to those young players out there, be on special teams. If you want to be an NFL player, if you want to help your team, be on special teams. It sends such a great message to the rest of the team and to the NFL. If you've got a scout coming in and, and you care about more than – your selfish position. Well, there, there's a reason why these teams are, are, are playing in the, in the playoff. And you, you, you saw it show up on Notre Dame's kickoff coverage there on Clemson's punt team. Uh, when your best players are, are making an impact in, in every phase of the game, uh, it, uh, it really bit, builds that uh, camaraderie within your team, and it, it's pretty special. And, that, and that's something, though, that Clemson has done all year. Notre Dame really hasn't. Mm. When we played Notre Dame this year, they didn't have a lot of their starters on the kickoff team. And... So Clemson, though, has pretty much done that the whole year with Wilkins and Lawrence and, and those guys. So um, that's a little bit different from what they were doing at the midway point. Well, and if you're Clemson and you're, you're used to blowing people out, this is a pretty good message for Notre Dame to say, we're here. We're going to play in this ball game. Right. So it, you, you, you're not going to be able to walk in here and walk out with an easy win. You're going to have to work for this. And I think that's a whole key for Notre Dame is just to, to make this the fourth, fourth quarter game. I mean, they are, uh, you know, no reference to, to it earlier, but they've been in that situation. You know, they've, they've had to, to win a, a variety of games, um, you know, you know, that looked a lot different in, in how it was done. But uh, uh, this is going to be, it's, it's setting up to be a heck of a matchup. ETN stretching that hamstring, too. and that, that Yeah, that'd make me a little nervous if I was over on that yep, sideline. Yep. Yeah, as you know, they're... Their skill is as deep as it gets. Right. I mean, well, there, there's boys. a drop off, though, between him and the next guy, I can yeah. promise you. Yeah. And but, also, the kickoff coverage team, even though they didn't get the fumble, gives you great field position right. at the 30 plus <laughs> yard line here. So it, it gives you a chance on offense to, to go back the other way. 
So what do you do now, Mike, if you're chip? You, you I, go think back you, I, I think plan? you go back to what you've been doing. You know, last series you were able to mix up, you know, a little bit of the run in the past. Uh, you you want to stay ahead of the ahead of the change. You want to, you know, keep building that confidence with Book as the game mo- moves on. Maybe get him with the, you know, get him out of the pocket a little bit. Uh, if you if you have an easy sprint out, um, you know, I think it's a good time for it. Mm. That, that's a good run right Great there. Great first yep. run. I mean, if, this is not an easy unit to run the ball against, and I think anytime you get four yards, you got to consider it a win. It's a good run. And they're leaning up on them here. They're knocking them out of there, so nobody's really free. And that's an offensive line that lost two first-round draft picks a year ago. A little stick game here. <laughs> Look at that closing speed. Yeah. Um, here it looks like he's got yards and then zip. That's a big guy chasing him too. So Kendall Joseph, he's a he's an all ACC player. It's a big play right here, third and four. What do you do, Paul? I think they'll probably try to throw it, uh, you know, some kind of a short possession route. Clemson's probably going to try to set on it and make them have to convert. There's a short route. Yep. Yep. Great catch. Oh, what a great catch. Great catch. What a great catch. And Paul called it. They sent one deep, sent the inside guy deep, had the little under route with the outside guy. But you got to make plays. Right. Not every ball is going to be perfect. Great catch. And first down. And, and that's, position again. That's the thing about the Notre Dame receivers is both those guys are 6'4", close to 230 pounds. There's another shot play. Mm-hmm. There you go. So there's their, uh, you know, the, the little cro- the post in the, in the corner route. And with Clemson, you just don't get the time to let these plays develop. And this was a tight end trying to block a deep, one of the better defensive ends in, the, in college football. And I always worried because the tight end doesn't stand he doesn't spend all day at practice trying to block. Yeah, you just got to tell him there to lose with dignity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what a big loss. Yeah, I don't know Farrell on a tight end. That's, yeah, that's no. their bread and butter. No. no, that was a mismatch. It's good. Got some of it back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were three over two of the field, two over two of the boundary, and Book saw it right away. And so you're going to have a third down and eight probably? Well, they're trying to get the ball out quick, and that's what you got to do against them if you're yes, going to. As we go to break, though, win for Notre Dame. L- longer this game is a one score yeah, game, it's it. a win for Notre Dame. What they have to do. So uh, we'll take a break, come back for the second quarter. Mike, you're both offensive coordinators. What adjustments do you make after the first quarter? No, I think uh, I think Notre Dame, you know, was able to get a little bit of rhythm. You've know, been able to run the ball for 34 yards. Some of that being on the quarterback runs, which was good. The quarterback draw. Um, you've got to keep that balance. You can't let. You, you saw the Titan trying to take the shot on the first down, got the negative play. Um, you know, Clemson has got to establish the run game. You know, Notre Dame's doing a good job of, of stacking the box, but you, you got to take the easy gimme gimme yards, whether that's a spot throw, but then got to find a way to run the football. Changes, Paul. Uh, same thing. I'm a little surprised that Clemson, with uh, with as much press coverage as they've gotten, haven't taken a couple more shots. Uh, but Notre Dame's doing what they have to do to stay in the game. They're they're controlling the ball and the time of possession and converting on third down, staying on the field. This third down is going to be huge here to start the second quarter. Dave, after this play, I'm going to ask you about <laughs> Notre Dame's first quarter defense. Okay, first and 10. Clemson's being more aggressive, coming after him. Once again, great throwing catch. And great you, throwing catch. You get in the empty and you play zone, and there's holes. Yeah, they're, and, they're, and Book is, he's accurate. And that was really, you know, Wimbush made a lot of great plays with his feet. The Book guy is very accurate. And that's an example of those big body throws that Notre Dame, when you have receivers that are 6'4", 230, that run well and look like tight ends. You just give them four or five shots a game to make a play like this. You see, this is a third, the third first down shot that Notre Dame's tri- taken. Uh, you've got the one-on-one matchup down the field. You know, trying to be aggressive on you know when you get that landmark spot. But uh, 
you know, these second and tens become big plays. You know, obviously a great play call there with the, the quick slant and the boundary off the run pass. Um, you know, keep you in a third and manageable. When you said they big bodies, those guys are big. Yeah, I mean, you just you get inside leverage on a smaller corner, and they don't have to be open. You just throw their, their inside shoulder or outside shoulder, and they'll box them out. Sprint to help protection. All right, I think they were probably expecting pressure, and uh, we got the guy coming off the, the uh, boundary, the little twist or a little blitz, like kind of like a weak blitz. Clemson does a great job of here is having their two secondary players on different levels. So you're seeing Notre Dame trying to run a pick route, but because the corner presses, he allows the safety to get over the top, and that and that really defeats this play. Fourth and three, they're going for it. You have to, right? Here we go, big body throw and great play. Great defense. So both defenses right now are, are really playing well. And what they do here, Dave? Or are they just trying to run a, a little bit of a, a, a fade here and, and try to get a big body throw? But that's an inside fade that you get man coverage, and it's probably a smash that against two press defenders becomes an under and an inside fade. And got the man free, got the press underneath, got the free safety back. You notice, you notice the leverage of the, uh, of the safety, taking away the outside leverage, you know, press on the, on, by the corner, trying to take away the inside slant, you know, great gate. Great preparation and, uh, and execution right. there. Huge stop, like a turnover. Yeah, like right. Yeah, and, and if you watch, they peel the defensive end. Farrell, he peeled off on the back and brought the two inside linebackers. So they're kind of changing shot. up. I tell you what, they're, they're playing a lot more hard corner defense than they traditionally play. So what, what Clark does a really good job of is he presents the same pitcher. Clark Lee, defensive Clark Lee, coordinator. And then he changes it up post-snap. So what you see isn't what you get. Here's a good example. They go to crack the quarter's safety, and they were in cloud coverage, and the corner rolls under and makes play. It's a little seven yards on first down. Yeah. It's Easy second three. Your whole playbook's available. Yeah, and they caught him in man free there. And the, the safety was looking to jump the over route, and he over jumped it. So if you watch that defender right there, he's looking for the shallow cross. Yep. And he just sits it down in the open space. Great job, too. Man coverage, you run. Zone, you sit. He sat. Great play by the receiver. Here's the double stacks again. It's two on two. Take a shot. There you go. There you There's go. The shot. There's the yeah, I mean, yeah. That's what I was talking about. It's, if, if, if they, I don't think they can survive doing that the whole game. Uh, well, but that's their chance, right, Dave? That, that's Notre Dame's best chance because they can't stop the run if they spread out and they, they can't. I mean, it's pick your poison. Yeah. And this is the matchup. Uh, who's the corner that I can't see? Who's the corner? That's six. Let's see. That would be five, probably. That's pride. That's yeah, that, to, to me, up. that's the, the matchup that they were going to try to work. And I thought pride up until that rep had done a great job. But that position for Clemson this year caught about 100 balls for over 1,600 yards and 19 touchdowns. You know, I don't. I think Pride's at the yeah, bottom. I think I'm well, that's, say, that's, that's um, probably love. Yeah, with Troy, I'm sorry then, because it's yep. not you. Nope. <laughs> well, you know, this is the third time that Clemson's gotten in this formation, the stack receivers. Uh, you know, we, uh, we were talking about uh -oh. botched extra points and field goals that changed the game. And again, there's... Special team showing up. Uh, penetration in the A gap just blew it up. I, mean, I always think that's a credit to a defense that you just give up a long play and then you line up for a PAT and you give effort like that and that can become a game changing play. Well, and it really changes the, um, the momentum too. I mean, just the, the fact that you've just scored and now it's taken away from you. Go back and see if we can pick this up. We're spending so much time with the. Uh, Spending so much time with the um, deep ball, we missed the extra point. The thing about Clemson is that you, you play well, you play yeah. well, you play well, and then bang. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. They, they just have so much skill that, that they're going to create some plays. 
Okay, here's the fourth down play. Let's go back over it. Draw if we can. This was the fourth yeah, down. Yeah, the, what we have is it's probably a game. smash route. And be, when you get two guys pressed, a lot of times that'll convert to an under. And you see here the, the guy from Notre Dame is trying to run an inside fade route and get here. The safety from Clemson does a great job of staying outside leverage, which funnels him to the deep safety. And yeah. Dave, draw uh, Colin Farrell at the top to the defensive end. Yeah, peeling off. Paul made a comment about him peeling off. They're so well coached. Yeah, and, and they do a lot. And I would think that if you're Notre Dame, if you run that back one more time real quickly before they start. Yeah, I don't think I we can't can. Get it. Can you put that back up? The, the, the thing that they should, you know, if they're going to attack in the secondary, I think Tanner Muse is a great run defender. But when they get man coverage, that's – that's who I would try to go yeah, after. Here it is. Yeah. At the top. And you can see they've got him matched on the tight end. Clemson does, which is a, is a better match for him. But if you watch that to the top, you can see that, that he tries to flat foot it. You know, this, this is an example where just the, the pressure the pressure of Clemson right. and the anticipated pressure. You see the two blackers blitzing inside. It's actually a really good pickup by the yeah, O-line. Right. Quarterbacks kind of rolled if, himself into pressure. And if you, you rewind that again, that the quarterback is being expected to get flushed to the field because the unblocked defenders right. to the boundary, and because they peel, it really creates bad leverage to the field. Exactly. Well, and... and for our fans, the fourth down stop ended up leading to the touchdown, right. like a turnover. So Notre Dame's really had two turnovers with the turnover for the field goal and the turnover on the fourth down stop as such. But I think if you're Notre Dame, you have to go for that fourth down. You have to. I mean, it's, you cross the 40, you're going to have to score some points. Totally agree. And you see, you see Clemson, you're both both sides are doing a great job setting up the, the pl setting up the next play. The two stack receivers multiple times. You get in the, the quick five yard uh, spot throw off the pressure. Uh, coming back, Notre you know Notre Here's Dame. Here's the touchdown too, guys. Yeah, Notre Dame jumps into man coverage, so they actually they get a favorable matchup outside with the big play receivers. Um, you know this is this is what the game's gonna come down to the one on one and. Uh, well, Two yeah, on I mean, two right with a free get, safety. Right. If you go ahead, rewind it. So right now you've got, if you pre-snap now, you've got two on two here, you got two on two here, and you're going to work away from the safety. So the safety stops here, and his eyes immediately go there. And, I mean, that, that by the design of Notre Dame's defense, they're telling Clemson, this is where we want you to go with the football. Yeah, right. we're talking about unbelievable skill. And you said well, that's skill as good as anybody. That's a 6'4 freshman. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I'm glad he's going to be around. Yeah, that's you guys, will, you, you guys will play him next year. You guys will get to play yeah. against him for a while, at least uh, two more Coach years. Johnson doesn't seem too concerned about it. Really. Yeah. No, Coach Johnson's not worried about Clemson anymore. He'll yeah, at least a couple more years. He'll be playing play. golf during my game with Clemson. <laughs> he will not care. So Notre Dame trying to settle it back down. Got yeah, a good uh, first down run. Uh, got it second, second and five. Uh, you're here getting back into their 12 personnel. Uh, your angle flow run. Good job. Good job fitting by the safety of Clemson. This is something that Notre Dame tries to establish every week as a way of running the ball on the perimeter to the boundary. And then depending on how you fit it and how you're forcing it, they'll usually have a play action that complements that, that tries to be a shot play. So it'll be interesting if they come back with a play action out of that twins wing set. Huge third and two. Got to stay on the field right after a score. There it is. Oh, oh. They had it. They had it. Yeah. Oh. A little anxious at quarterback. Look at his feet. Didn't sit the feet, had pressure coming. We sit there and we act like quarterback position is easy to play. Look at these guys coming yeah. after him. You know, you can see you can see the left guard here, 69. Um, you know, a little late on peeling back out with the pressure coming. You know, that's those are those quick flashes at quarterback that you just, you know, force you to rush the throw just a just a half second too quick and. Uh, you know, on third and short, you gotta gotta be able to execute in those situations. You know, don't punt it in the middle of the field to a fast guy. Don't punt it in the middle of the field. They had good coverage. It, but that, th those are the plays that Notre Dame has to convert. Yeah, four, they, four, they had three, a great and play call. They set yeah. it up with the call before that. Yeah, he's really wide open. That, that's pumps. yeah, that's a uh, that's a play. Mike, you've been very involved in. Chad Morris and the Clemson offense from Tulsa. Mm -hmm. um, what's Clemson doing now? T talk to us about 
who this offense is today. You know, I think you know, the, the big play capability with the skilled athletes that they have, you know, they've done a great job uh, throughout the season of the explosive runs. Uh, you know, you saw earlier with the, with the, the long touchdown throw, finding the one-on-one -on -one matchup. And, you know, they've got uh, you know, great versatility in what they need to do. I think the run game, you know, continuing to, to establish that in this game is just going to continue to create the opportunities as this game wears, wears on. Dabo actually texts me like Just Dave, now? but no, not right now. <laughs> he, uh, he's a little busy right now. He probably he feels like he could right now. He feels better, but he texted me before I took the job at North Carolina and said, are you going to do this? And I said, yes, but we're appealing to the NCAA, and if we don't have to play you next year, then we'll do it, and now people can see why. If you want to play him twice, we'll give him up once. <laughs> Big series for both teams here. Notre Dame's got to stop them, right? right. They can't let it get, yeah, and get out of control. So they're playing a lot of man. Then after they give up the big play right away, they played zone. Mm -hmm. So they just keep it in front of you. And so right now you've got a five-man box for Notre Dame. they got a hat on a hat. Great. And now maybe you see if you can hold up doing that because you want, let the ball get over your head. There it is. So the stack set again. Yep, they're spread out again. They're showing the rover, they back him out, now they're playing too deep again. And right there, go tackle it. That's a great play by the, by the safety there, but you can see that this is going to be something that Clemson continues to go back to. Uh, you'll, you'll hear they, it's a great job, great decision by the quarterback, getting the ball on the perimeter, uh, but it comes down to that one-on-one. -on -one. Here the Notre Dame safety won that, uh, won that, uh, that opportunity. And Mike, with this an option of run or pass? Uh, it is. It's a, this is a run play called. Uh, you know, when the, when the adjuster, the, when this defender plays the run, he knows he's got the easy uh, uh, spot to the perimeter. And... I, I think Notre Dame kind of baited him into that throw. If you notice, they showed the field linebacker, and I think they were expecting strong rotation, and then they bailed. So now on third down and four, do you still play zone? Or do you well, try, to, try to get mad? Maybe you play a little bit of bracket timeout, here. That, First time out of the yeah, so they changed it up. Yeah, that, this, was, my timeout. this wasn't going to be a single high look. If you run that, that thing back to the last play again, too, on the Telestrator, you can see, like on the RPO, I think what, what Mike was talking about, you can see they're, they're reading the end here, right here on the back. And this guy was the quarterback player. So when he sucks him in, they've got the two on two. And it becomes, had this guy stayed out, it would have been interesting to see if the quarterback would pull the ball and run with it. You know, I think, I think the, the, the Notre Dame quarterback, or the corner here, does a great job of forcing the ball back inside. Uh, this is just a little tiny detail in the game. Uh, the Clemson receiver, you'd love to see him get that outside pin to let the, let the receiver hit the sideline, just how it fits. But uh, these are the small details that show up. Uh, oh. quarter, I mean... And if you're the guy upstairs, Mike, now you also see this safety feel so fast, you've got to oh, pump and go. You're coming back. You're coming back with a shot. No, with a shot. Good job filling. Good tackle. Well, after him. And great if, if you really look at the officials, this would be one that I would be. Of course, they're throwing the ball back behind the line this time so we, you can get away with it. But you can see the right tackle, 73. Uh he may be just a tad down the field when the ball comes out. They say three to four yards, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, and this, this is the game, though. You, you know, when you put, look at the, the Clemson spread, it's about finding that one-on-one. That -on -one. And right. here in this situation, it comes down to this receiver being in a one-on-one -on -one play with seven yards of separation on the safety. Right. Uh, yeah, or he is. And that's where, that's where that's what it's going to come down to. Here, chop one up for Notre Dame. A, a great play in that, in that regards. But with how fast he filled, I can promise you the shot's coming. Yeah, when you, you see the lineman downfield, I think that's one of the biggest changes in college football. It's a run, it's a pass. I think it's the hardest, it's the Three most unfair years. rule in college football. Uh, you, I thought the cup lock was the most unfair rule. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was before Paul quit. Now it, it's fine. But when, when we were on the rules committee together, well, you were always fighting for the cup lock well, to eliminate no, them. You can teach people to put their hands down. You, you, can't, <laughs> you can't teach people when a 300-pound guy's running at them when they're throwing it over behind them. It's like I don't know. Maybe somebody could. I don't. I don't know what to tell the linebacker. You got a 340-pound guy firing out at you, and then they're throwing it right behind you on the slant. Well, and very difficult for the officials. We even they can't call official. it. They'll tell you they, they can't, can't call. They can't see they that. Can't Their see mechanics it. don't allow them to see it. No, unless it's really obvious. So now you come back to a third down and four. Your own defense, Dave. What do you do? Do you do you still play zone? Do you? You, you know what? A third and four. 
if you play zone, there's holes and there's easy completions. And I, I think it becomes a matter of instead of just playing man free, you find a way to play a form of man and provide some type of help. You know, well, here you, they are. Here you see Clemson getting in the bunch set, trying to force force their hand. You know, I think, uh, you know, like Coach mentioned earlier, you're going to find Renfro, and uh, you want to make sure you have eyes on him. Uh, I like, you know, I like the, you know, how Clemson's distributing their receivers. Inside guy at the top, right? Renfro in motion. Yeah, yeah. And now He's been gonna, the guy. He'll come zone. out here in the flat. Man's own key. Which is here the, comes a the trail. Here, and there's your whole player now. Yeah. So Notre Dame is playing man, though, but they're playing it now with two safeties, as before they were doing more five-man pressure with only one high. Such I mean, and a great job by the freshman quarterback. I mean, locates the ball. I mean, Notre Dame knows what's coming. I mean, like like Coach Clausen said, there's your whole 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 safety dropping, uh, expecting the uh, the under route, but you know, great location. And that's and that's why you use motion like this. Is this is what we call a pre-snap indicator that you use that motion to see what type of reaction you get. And now because of the reaction, Lawrence knows that it is a form of man coverage. And now you try to hit the separating route, the one that runs away from man. And immediately the ball goes to the outside receiver. And they're trying to show too deep at the top mm -hmm. to make sure he can't take the shot. Yeah, and then the free safety becomes the whole player. And uh, otherwise, that thing could be out the gate on the backside. And then look at the release and the accuracy of this young quarterback. Mm -hmm. You can see how quick it comes out. Yeah, his wrist is uh, his wrist is really good. It's really good, and he's got pressure. Yeah, he didn't he even keep, flinch. And he keeps his eyes down the field. Yeah, yeah, great conversion. And that's something Notre Dame hasn't done. They haven't converted on third and two and fourth and three, and Clemson just did. But right now, third and fourth down conversion. Now again, a showing eight. man and playing zone. And now there he goes, and that's a big tackle. I'm really impressed with these Notre Dame safeties. You know, they've shown up big in, in a couple of space plays there in the run game. Yeah, look at that safety come up. And again, you're going to see play action here at some point. To yeah, I tell you what, I, I really thought Gilman. Gilman was a transfer from Navy. He didn't play last year. And he is a very underrated player. You know, all those other guys have the accolades and were highly recruited. This guy came in from Navy. And, and I really thought he made a big difference in their defense. He was a very sure-handed tackler, um, good player. There's now a zone blitz instead of the man blitz. You can't get their defensive lineman, get your hands up. Yeah, and Notre Dame ran the same blitz earlier and played man. And, and now they're dropping the boundary end, and it's becoming a little bit of three deep, three under. You notice the motion, like Coach just mm -hmm. mentioned, that, you know, add in the motion for the freshman quarterback. Let him see what's, you know, is it going to be a man look, zone look. You see the zone with nobody going across with the motion, work into the concept side. Good very play by the D-line and get his hand up. Very simple concept to see what they're in. Okay. This is the, the same pre-snap look now. Notre Dame has played with their man free, bringing five. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to end up in a two-high shell, and they're playing two-man. There you go. You get the middle oh, of the field. Oh, oh, oh man. <laughs> Well, and look at the middle linebacker for Notre Dame who is in the line of scrimmage, and then he spies on the back. Yeah, this is two-man, so what you can't have happen here is you can't can. allow a guy to get an inside release. Because that safety is helping on outside throws. Yep. Great route by this receiver. You're back with the stack. Spread the hey, field. two down below here, now it's three. Run it. It is again. Good play. Good tackle. But you sit there, and, and even though it's a really good play by Notre Dame's safety coming down, you know, it's still a three-yard game. It's, it's, a, it's a productive play. You know, once again, just to, you're forcing those defenders to have to, have to defend the, the width of the field. Uh, the shot will be coming. And this is Clemson. They get new sets, and they define the numbers. And if you're outnumbered, the ball is going out there immediately. Yeah, Notre Dame single high again. Bale. Too high. So that's the that's the guessing game. There we go. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Little miscommunication there. So safety. Yeah, the, sa the safety right as soon, as soon as you get the bubble, the safety's got to snap his eyes to number one. He feels the run. Safeties have been really aggressive. Yeah, it's just it's a bad eye discipline. Yeah, a bad play. They get away with one. Offense number 76, 10-yard penalty. Look at the community talk going down below there. 
Those guys are, if you rewind it there, you see at the very end of the play in the end zone that they're talking about the communication. You look right down here at the end. Where the safety thought the corner was going to bail, and the corner thought he had over it's the your top. fault. No, it's my fault. No, it's your fault. No, it is your fault. Okay, let's a, get our story yeah. straight before yeah. we get to the sideline. Yeah. Well, they got a holding penalty, so it worked out. It's second and 17. Here we go. Zone mm -hmm. read. And I think he's going to do that today, like I said, just enough to kind of make them have to play it. Well, right here, this is this is where the corner has to fit. Quarter, the, the corner is a quarterback player. He gets pinned. He allows allows Lawrence to get to the outside. Uh, so one of the things Clemson does is they play eight or nine receivers, and they have a regular rotation. So when you get to the third and fourth quarter, they're fresh. Their best players are still fresh. I think Notre Dame's doing a nice job of stemming pre-snap. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to change up the looks for the quarterback, but, you know, I mean, for, for a true freshman to come out and, you know, execute the way he has a big third down throw on the, uh, on the, on the, on the end cut in, on the end cut earlier, I mean, he's playing at a high level. Yeah, the question has been answered about whether he'll respond or not. And he looks fast. He is. It's just a matter of he's going to take enough hits throwing the ball. How many of these hits do you want him to take? Well, and the defensive player gets hurt. He, I'm telling you what, Gilman would be a big loss for them. You can see how good an athlete the quarterback is there. I mean, the Reed key, you know, kept his shoulder square and shuffled down, and he just outruns him. He just, you know, again, it was kind of an iffy read, but he, he pulled it, and he's athletic enough to get away from him. One of the tougher things is to have enough depth to have another good player come right. in and to, to win enough games to be able to play too deep all the time. And, and I don't, I think Notre Dame has some depth up front. I don't know if they have that same depth in the back end. Yeah. Well, and you just said the, uh, the wide receiver depth at Clemson beats you down over cool. time. You, you get tired and you see a new fresh face come in that can't wait to block yeah. you. And, and they all look the same. They're all 6'4", 210. <laughs> right. Every and, single one of them. And they're the same way on defense up front. You, you know, that's why for most teams to lose, you know, Dexter Lawrence would be a killing blow, but they've got a bunch of those guys. You know, just looking at Notre Dame's defense, I'm trying to, you know, I haven't seen Julian Love as much. And you see, uh, it looks like Dante uh, Vaughn, they're playing the boundary corner. Um, you know, with Gilman's out, I mean, that would be that's really testing the depth of, of who they have. So you can see the you got a three by one detached set. You, it looks like you have the one on one up top. Third and seven after the holding penalty, and they get the sack, so they forced the field goal. Yep, and, and Notre Dame the same thing now. Look, if you look at it, they're they're showing that uh, the double linebacker up look instead of running a five man pressure and twist, and now they're trying to take away some of those inside cutters. Still went back to one free though. Yeah, this is this is where this really? is where if you're if you're Clemson, you got to take that one on one up top. Right. I and mean, they, they 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 rolled the safety. Uh, you can see uh, Lawrence got got hung up on the concept side. Um, Notice yeah. who got open again? Run pro. Yeah. Big. He had an here. outside leverage man to player, and he still beat him outside. See if they've corrected the penetration in the A gap. Yep. Yeah. Huge stop. Missed it. Ooh. Absolutely huge stop. I know what, man, they're hanging in there. You see, I mean, here early in this game, in the first half, uh, you know, the special teams advantage has been all, all Notre Dame. And that's something that with the block, with the block extra point, you know, the, the, the big stop on the kickoff cover. And now here, here's a missed, uh, missed execution on the field goal. Uh, pot, yeah. Potential momentum swing for, for the Fighting Irish. Well, if you look, Notre Dame's got to take care of the ball and they got to convert on third and fourth and short. That's where they've been short in this in the start of this game. And they're going to wear their defense out if they can't get something going here yeah. and hang on to the ball for a little bit. And we felt like one thing they had to do was try to wear Clemson down because they were short. Uh-oh. Clemson guessed right. Yep. Had a, a little bit of a pressure against the trick play. When that quarterback's not getting the ball out of his hand quickly on the trick play, it ain't good, brother. 
throw it now. If, you know, it's, <clears> it's, <throat> an, it's, an aggressive, it's an aggressive call yeah. coming out on the on the PN10. Uh, you know, that's these second downs. You know, the second and ten. I think Notre Dame's done a solid job on. Uh, this is you know you got to get back into third and manageable. Uh, you know. You got to get you got to get four or five here. There you go. There's your big body fade. There you go. Great ball. Back shoulder fade. Yep. Venables is on the sideline screaming about pass interference. Yeah, I mean you got you got six four six five matched up against six one. Okay, the, the, if that ball's well thrown on the back shoulder fade, it's impossible to play. I think. I mean it's. It was in great coverage. You just hard to play it when it's well thrown. First down run. Great well, job on defense. Farrell. <laughs> His, uh, you feel good about everything offensively oh, man. right here until uh, <laughs> until he jumps inside on you. That's one of those you just say, good job, Colin. Ooh. That's good. Yeah, I like that, Colin. And his, his ability to play the run this year really got better, too. There's a pressure. pressure for a week. Nice job sitting in the hole. I think that, that uh, Notre Dame's done a great job against the zone fire. Mm-hmm. You know, the two under three deep stuff. Uh, Out the corner. Yeah. And that's, you know, they play man and they get the, the big ball fade and then they go to a uh, zone pressure. You, know, you, you look on this drive, you know, that's second and 10 after the trick play, you hit the hit the fade ball here, second and long after the, the nice play by Farrell and, you know, obviously, uh, uh, you know, a nine yard gain there. So this is under review. I think they pot. Yeah, they're looking where the spot is. Oh, he did. Oh, oh, dropped oh, the ball. Wow. So is it a completion or not? Uh, incomplete. I think it's. And see who got the ball. They're probably hoping it's incomplete if the kid from Clemson covered it. No, he got it back, but. So we're the officials. That's unusual. Paul, complete or incomplete? You know, this one, I'm. I'm not sure that there's enough there to overturn it. All right, you got to be direct. Incomplete or complete? Well, they called it complete on the field. That's what I'm saying. I don't so know if they'll overturn it. it. Yeah. Dave? Well, since Paul's going to be one of the top replay officials in the <laughs> ACC next year, I'm going to agree with him. Uh, Make Mike. sure we get this call at BB&T Field, okay? Yeah, right, you're, it's, you're right. You know, it's, so it, it's, it's such a bang-bang play. I don't, I don't know if the receiver you know, truly established the possession uh, you know, on the move. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that they're going to go with incomplete here. I'm going incomplete. I'm, I'm not old enough to be a replay official. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can hey, say that. I want to say on the record, Dennis Hannigan, right. I, Paul said that, not me. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, this is a huge pass. Incomplete pass. This is, incomplete. This is a huge swing right here. Now you go from third and one, you know, potential push and field goal range to now being third and third and ten. Yeah, and, huge and, difference. And these, things, these things against this Clemson pass rush, um, See, and, and I think, though, here's the situation because of where the ball is. If you can just get five, six yards, I think that you might be in four down territory again. This is one of those situations where, you know, maybe, maybe dropping a, a run play in, you know, in, in this trying, yeah. to, trying to pop one against the potential pressure. You got a six man box. There you go. You called it. Mm. Now you're not going for it. No. Now you got to punt. Uh-huh. Went, went with the perimeter run. Um, but the hard thing with Clemson is it's really hard to move them, right. and it's hard to outrun them. <laughs> exactly. Other than that. Well, the thing that, that they can do so well, they can play with a five-man box and stop the run. And when you can do that, yeah. then it just it creates so many problems. And, and that's a play by Austin Bryant, who really is one of the – underrated guys in that front. Um, you know, everyone talks about Farrell and Lawrence and Wilkins, but Bryant in his own right is a very good player. You know, I think that's a great call by uh, Coach Venables, you know, with the with the little line game. Uh, you had the T E stun on, which you obviously protects you. It gives you a little bit of a pass rush, you know, versus a drop back, but you know, there against the read replay, get your get your end moving flat and All right, you, you raised Chip Long. Why hand the ball off on third and ten? You know, I think I think his thought was, you know, being in that he had two downs there. You know, I'm sure Coach Kelly told him before the play, uh, you know, that if if he got five, he'd probably have a chance to go for it in a fourth and manageable. Um, try to catch him off guard a little bit. Um, so you look like a fool. 
if you're the offensive coordinator, if you break it to 10, <laughs> what a call. Oh, yeah. oh my God. But, but they had the numbers. I mean, yeah. Clemson was in a too high look, and you had a hat on a hat, and it's not a bad call. It just Which wasn't. The other part about why he called it. Mm -hmm. They had the numbers. They didn't get out of it. They just couldn't right. block them. Their numbers are different than everybody else's numbers. I tell you what, it's really interesting now that Notre Dame is, if you notice it, they're showing a lot of pressure and then bailing and playing a lot more too deep. I think that one big play really has backed them off a little bit. Well, and they're doing a good job with a five-man box, too, stopping yeah, the run. They're holding up. So if they can do that, it's... I mean, people talk about Clemson's defensive line coming back, but a lot of these guys for Notre Dame came back, too. You know, Tillery, Bonner, uh, those guys are, are, you know, that's a grad student and a, a senior that probably also could have left a year ago as well. Once again, a great tackle and um, great tackle in the open field there. Both defenses are playing really well, I think. And here, here you are in the third and short. You got 356, two timeouts left. You're trying to score, right? This is your aggressive. <laughs> you are, but at this point, I think you can still make a first down. Keep the ball, not go hurry up yet, and prevent Notre Dame from getting the ball back. We always felt like you need to be past the 30 before you'd go one minute late like this. Well, I think they got plenty of time, especially the way they play. And two timeouts. Yeah. That's a good call. I tell you what, they're, that's just shown that to win this game, they're willing to run him in critical yeah, situations. I mean, I, I, that doesn't surprise me at all. Third and one, they used him in the yeah, red yeah. zone. Once again, you can see defensive the, end linebacker comes down. All right. Yeah, watch the, the key there is watch the safety, number 11 for them, Gilman. You know, he's flat footing it, and his eyes are in the backfield. Again, probably a deep play action right. pass at some point. Well, behind Gilman. The, the Mike linebacker made a heck of a play. I mean, he really scrapes did. over the top. There we go. Uh, they played it about well as they could play. Well, there's man free again. There you go. That's a special player. There's my man. Great route, you know. Got him turn the defensive back around. You know, I think people just underestimate him. And when I talk to the pro scouts who, who came to watch us, you know, they all think he's going to play on Sundays. And, and I agree. He's a great route runner, he, high football IQ. And I think he should get one more game of eligibility to face North Carolina next year. So, <laughs> yeah. Somebody yeah, needs to tell Dabo they're running the option. Thanks. Here we go again. Another quarterback run. That's uh, how they're utilizing Lawrence in this game and, and, and really the confidence you see with him in the reads. Right. I mean, right here, you know, square shoulders, but he knows he can get around that defensive end, and, and here comes a shot. Here play action. They got, the shot. they got him. And they got uh, yeah, they got a hold in the guy. defensive pass. In yeah. the yeah. grab he grabbed him. Knew it was coming. Renfro blocks the inside guy there, 13, acks like he's going to block on the quick screens, so yeah. he shuffles and goes. And really, like, this is the formation, if you reads. watch it. This Ten gets tranquil. The spot, automatic he first down. is an excellent box defender out of the box, and it brings their, their nickel into it. Now you got three skilled against the linebacker and two skilled. Well, it's hard to play at the line of scrimmage and play them deep as fast as they are. So yeah. screen, screen, screen. Yep. You've had eight screens and then a pump and go. If you don't press that point guy, though, the ball will go out there immediately. Yeah. There we go. Like you said, pick your poison. They got plenty of time. I think you got them with a little you know, twist there. You know, the, each time that, that Lawrence pulls the football and runs, it slows down these edge defenders. You look at Tranquil here off, off, the, off the side, he is the read. Earlier he was feeling hard inside. Now he's slowing down because of you know, you know, Lawrence hurting him with his legs. 203, two timeouts forever in this college is, football. This is, this is critical here for Notre Dame. You know, they nope. started. Mm. You know, they need a stop here. Forced one in there. That was... What do you think? You're on the 37. You're saying two downs? I think it depends I, on what you get on third down. I do too, but I'm, I'm being aggressive and going four downs. I wouldn't be surprised if they, they stick in a run here and try to make it yeah. fourth and three, fourth and four. Very similar to Notre Dame. 
they had the same thing if they have the numbers right. And then run down the clock a little bit, so if you go for it on fourth down and don't get it, you're not giving them a lot of time. And the thing Clemson knows is they're getting the ball. Now they're out. They're out. Not, they're outnumbered now. It's man free. Oh, false start. And it's going to be third and fourteen now. That changes. It. You, yeah. see, you see Notre Dame being aggressive, bringing. You know, they're playing man coverage once again, sticking to their game plan. There's a little double eagle, Mike Fire. It's probably helped force some of that uh, early movement on the, on the offensive line. Yeah, I mean, Notre Dame wasn't going to concede three yards there and allow it to be a fourth down decision. Don't get in a hurry, big man. Worried about that edge rusher. Hmm. There's reasons to worry. There are reasons to worry. Trying to take care of his quarterback. So now game changes, third and 14. Draw a screen. Yeah, showing pressure, probably going to bail out of it. Yeah, Draw a screen, bail. option route. Go back to Renfro. Nope, he's going up. Oh, oh. they got him. Oh, they got him. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. wow. Got him spread out. I'll tell you what, that's a bus. Yeah, that's, that's a bus. If you look at the, with the what the strong safety is doing, you watch this, the, the strong safety rolling down. There should be some type of rotation involved. Well, I think they're playing quarter quarter halves, yeah, and he's he, just flat foot, and he one or the other. He yeah. just got beat. You can yep. see that the when the outside guy bails, it's quarter quarter half, and the safety got rocked down. And whether he was trying to play it flat footed or, or the, thinking or the, the pressure was going to the corner, the corner should be sliced right. into the middle. Yeah, you know, the corner's got to middle it here with his own turn. Yeah, there's and, there's a bust. Well, and tall and fast is good. No, well, it's. Well, the problem is, is that those guys on the outside run so fast, and they get them on different levels. Well, that that corner is going to have a hard time to midpoint that. I mean, I I think the safety you can clearly see they're playing halves over here, and I think this, I think it was just quarters there, and the safety tried to flat foot it and got beat. Just how what was the down distance third, there? It was third, third, 14, 14. Boy, 14. That's a that's a tough. Wolf. That's a killer because you you. Yeah, that's Clemson. You do. You play well, you do some things right, and then they make these big explosive plays, and now you're down two scores. But you, you look at the quarterback here. I mean, this is a, this is a true freshman. Right. Rhythm, eyes, eyes in the right place, stick on the back foot, drive a ball, you know, 20 yards down the field on, on the money. I mean, it's a, this is a big time college football play. I think. MVP of the first of the first half has to be Very has accurate. to be Trevor Trevor Lawrence. I Great mean, what throw. he's done in the in the run game, forcing that's, forcing uh, Notre Dame to account for him. Guys, you want the good news? That's two touchdowns for the freshman that's coming back. Yeah, yeah you're <laughs> laughing because you're out of here. You, yeah. you, you hey, can quit. Hey, we, got... hey, we had to play them every year for 11 years. Yes, what, what was your record against them, Paul? Uh, we were, well, I actually played them 12 times. I think we were five and seven. I like it. Uh, we've got, uh, we got a great game here and we've got a fun team. We also have a great game coming up with uh, Oklahoma and so Alabama next. Uh, Alabama. Let's go to Herm. Herman yes, the guys. Hey, hey, we're, we're arguing here about this route combination, so. but we're also arguing about basically the coverage. When you think about what they're trying to do, it's third and long, and they present a coverage that basically no post help. Uh, that's not good. What happens when they do that, Coach? Well, number one, they didn't have anybody on the top of the number two vertical into the boundary. And yeah. so, on third I mean, and 15. Well, on third yeah, and 15. Third, after the yeah. penalty in corner. Right after the penalty. Back that's correct. The if they played the played the coverage the way they wanted to to the to the other side of the field, right. and they didn't have an inside hat player. You put a, basically put a safety shuffling on a vertical route into the boundary. This is what I call bad ball. <laughs> uh, and you'd always ask yourself this question when when, when you're when you're coaching: well, is it is it is, yeah. it is it is it the player or is it the call? On this one, we might have to look at the call on this one. Yeah, I think you look at the call okay. a little bit now. But yeah. if what we're talking about is is what we think, and the corner right. is supposed yeah. to play. Between one, be, well, be, between one and two, if he's supposed to be between one and two, watch it. Here comes the play. Here comes the, yeah. comes the play. Here comes the play. Watch the yeah. backer. He's going to run underneath the one. Safety's got no the help. safety's coming down. We got no hole player on third and fifteen, and he yeah. just runs the seam. Now, if the corner's yeah. supposed to play half the coverage, and he's got to get away from number one and get over the top of all yeah. this. Somebody has messed yeah. this up. I'm, whether it's whether it's the call or whether it's player error. See that usually when you play the call, that corner then is going to become the inside half player. He need to be more in the middle of the field. 
Yeah. You right. need to be off the numbers, and he actually played number one instead of helping both. Right. Well, I'm a little well, worried the about the safety was playing. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little worried about two things with you guys. Number one, I'm worried about you not having enough opinions. <laughs> oh, come um, oh, yeah. Hey, we're comfortable sitting in the couch now. Hey, yeah. like you guys. Hey, we've been listening. We've been listening. Don't wear back. yourself out. You guys have a long game tonight. Oh, hey, you, hey, I don't think I don't think Coach could wear himself. Coach out. Brown, you <laughs> guys, Mac, you guys are doing a great job on television. We love watching you, man. You guys are doing fabulous. <laughs> All right, guys, we're the B team. We're going to get to watch the A team tonight, so we got it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Well, sitting here with a minute 44 left, game changes now. To, what do you do for Notre Dame? Well, I think you've got to try to move the ball and score some points. I mean, you, you've got 120 yards in the first half, and, uh, you know, you're down 13 points. You've got to try to get something on the board here before halftime for sure. Yeah, you have three timeouts left. You have 100 seconds. You got to try to make something happen and go in there with some momentum. It's a good start. A good start to the drive. Get the chains moving. But, you know. but you've got to score. No, no right? question. Even if it's you've even if it's just a field goal, just to get the momentum back on your side. Okay, space is closed quick now. What's interesting that that play was made by Simmons who was one of the few players on Clemson that wasn't all conference and he's their leading tackler. Well, I would have voted for him. He's just very rangy and. Clemson's played a lot of, of Tampa two here in the first half and kind of a, I'd be surprised to see if they don't try to get somebody down the middle of the field and see if that linebacker can not get back there in the in the middle. What's interesting about this matchup is I would say of the teams we've played, probably Notre Dame has one of the bigger offensive playbooks and Clemson probably has one of the bigger defensive playbooks. So this, this matchup here gets really multiple. Well, this is key because you don't want to give the ball back to Clemson with a minute four and two timeouts either. Yep. Advance no. it. Go anywhere. Clemson, no. use a timeout. Use a timeout right now. Use it. Use it. Use it. You're not going to go There you go. Here. There you go. So now you got 55 seconds. You got a chance to block the punt. With and then you've got timeout two timeouts. Yeah, or one timeout left now. I mean, they, they've got one of the best the punt return guys in college football. Yeah. You yeah, kick it out of bounds, timeout. right? Kick it in the corner. You don't You don't want to give it to him. It just seems like every time you try to do something like that, your punter shanks a 15-yarder. Right. <laughs> I actually had a punter once that would do well. Every time I walked up, he'd get nervous. And I said, what is wrong with you? And he said, I get really nervous when you're here. And I said, you know, I'm going to be at most of the games. Right. So that's a problem for us, bud. I came up with a great idea late in our bowl game to squib kick it, and we gave it to Mike on the 40. Yeah. yeah. So that, I'm, I'm re-second that, I'm rethinking that decision. That's when you fire the special teams coach, say, why don't yeah. you have a squib it? He said, coach, you said it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't. I said squib it. I didn't it. mean it. That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. That's I what meant, I said. I meant squib it to the five. Yeah. You, you, you get right here at the end of the games, and if you're not real good in a kicking game, there are no good options. All right, yeah. you're, uh, you're Clemson. You come after it or you no, return it? No, because you don't want to rough, rough the kick and get momentum. You have one of the best returners in college football. They're not going to fake it. If you're Notre Dame, kick it at least down the boundary. Yeah, just don't, hold don't up put and, it in the middle. and let, try to kick let it left Rogers. over there to the Gunners. Yeah. He's got yeah. some space now. Nope. Hey, well, Clemson played that very conservatively. Yeah. Well, that was a nice kick. I mean, he got the directional punt over Nine there. Short. All right, 48 seconds, one timeout. Don't do anything uh, stupid here. Don't turn it over. I don't know. I think See how much that. confidence they have in the freshman quarterback. I tell you, watching them in the first half, had a lot of confidence in them. I, I would, <laughs> yeah. I would probably try to take, a, try to get a, a decent sized chunk play here on the on first down. Right. If, if you're able to hit it and maybe throw a little tempo in. Uh, the, the thing that you know is you're getting the ball back. Right. So, maybe, maybe a draw, see if you can break, get some field draw position. Draw screen, under I'd, route. I'd throw it here, and then I think the decision becomes second down. Probably something with crossers, multiple options. Still 48 seconds of timeout, a lot of time in college football. Notre Dame's playing zone. There you go. Throw it. Get up the field. Get out of bounds. Okay, now go fast, go fast, go fast. Go fast. Hurry up. Hurry up. Don't spike it. Go, go. You're using a lot of time here. Yeah. Wow. Hey, you're not going to get down there throwing it for two yards. That's set. At this point now, just run it out. Don't beat yourself. (laughs) 
Notre Dame tried to help them with the penalty and stop the clock. Come on, bud. <laughs> they didn't help us like that. No. <laughs> Not much you can do in 23 seconds, except uh, Offside, defense number 53. Yeah, I mean, at this point, the ball. Clemson head coach has declined. You try to try for the 15, 20 yard we'll start yeah. completion. You know, you have the timeout. If you can get in field goal range, at least give yourself an opportunity. Well, I think this, I think this penalty now changes it. Strong. Do you like the 10 second runoff? I do. I think it's a good rule. And why? Uh, just because that people, it stops you from getting, you know, creating a penalty to stop the clock. Now you got a decision. Do you go deep? Three-man rush. Get out of bounds. Get out of bounds. Get out of bounds. There you go. You still have your timeout. And you got to get the ball. Yeah. Notre Dame's going to give that up. They're... Yeah, if, you're, if you're Clemson, you have about three plays to get the ball 30 yards and take a shot at a field goal. So any... Got to have one chunk in here somewhere. Yeah, or any wouldn't play. Be shocked, f- wouldn't be shocked to see the, 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 the delayed stutter. You know, they've had a couple different sm- smash concepts. You maybe try to sneak a guy up the middle. Too deep coverage, middle mm-hmm. spree. Yeah, I think they're kind of. Yeah. Just run throw. Yeah. There it oh. is. There you go. There Double post. Post. Corner post. Got him. There you go. And that's all you got to get to. Now get up there. What a route. Look at this, folks. Yes. That's Look at the, him. The corner post, the hammer route. Corner. Bang. No, post. So quick, and what a throw! So First now you got ball, roughing the passer, roughing the passer, defense. and roughing the passer. So you got the ball on the 20-yard line. Now you First take out. a shot Stops in the, the end clock. zone. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got a chance for your field goal if you don't get it. Yeah, you got no sack. You got one. You got one play. Quarterback can't scramble. Be yeah. smart. Keep the right to kick. Got one play. I'm I'm really surprised they were in too deep. I mean, at least Time not a. You know, the little out route that the corner jump is not going to hurt you in that situation. And their skill guys are too good to put them one-on-one on on those safeties back there. So Clemson used their timeout. I don't – it was a penalty on Notre Dame. I don't know why they used it. Probably just to regroup and say we're going to take one shot with a freshman quarterback in the end zone, make sure we end up with the ball or kick. Just if – let's say the the snap hits the center's butt and gets on the ground. I mean, just – you want to save that one timeout for disaster. No question. And hopefully you've practiced this scenario enough that the kids should know that by now. And, and our rule of thumb was you always, if you had eight seconds left, you could, you had one play. Anything less than eight seconds, you kick. Well, I think this will be interesting here to see if you're Notre Dame, do you, you know, back up and, and drop in coverage and yeah. say, okay, no I'm going to give you the field goal? Right. Or do you bring some heat and... Defend the sideline. Defend right. the sideline. To, you know, force them to throw the ball inside because anything you can't spike the ball under three seconds. Right. Anything and that's not a first down, you could end the half on. So, no question. yeah, I'd, I'd play some type of three deep, five under. Force the ball to the middle. No question. Have well, him hold on to it. And if you can make him hold on to it, a young quarterback might well keep it too long. And well, you also may get a jump ball down there to those six four receivers if you don't true. get some pressure. All eight of them. <laughs> Yeah, this is touchdown or out of bounds immediately. You get one gather. It's like 10 to 2 man. You some type of robber coverage. And safety's running down. Really you got throw it to the, the top. Shot. There it is. Holy oh, cow. There it is. Wow. Touchdown. Are you kidding me? Wow. Golly, day, why would you? Holy hmm. cow. There it is. That, that's the ma- that, that position for Clemson. So much offense is generated, and it's just automatic. If they get a press, Without the safety, the ball goes there. And this is the same look that we had earlier where mm-hmm. Lawrence, same coverage, safety roll into the middle. You know, there's a one-on-one up top. Lawrence missed it yeah, on the third to... down, came back and converted here. Yeah, but it just the ball's going there. Your free safety's rotated no through the middle. You have press. You have arguably your best receiver. That's Vaughn. Well, they're trying to Dante bracket. Dante Vaughn because they yeah. got an extra defensive back in the game, right. number eight. They're trying to bracket Renfro there with a the safety rocking down, look like. Yeah, but that, that's who they go to in the red zone. Well, I realize that, but what I'm saying, yeah, exactly. I know why they're trying to bracket it's him, but I, I think I would have backed the other guy. No, that's what I'm saying. That they, yeah. they, you know, in, that, in, that situa- in that situation, you know, the, that's it's high risk, uh, you know, with, the, with no well, timeout. Right. You know, you're giving them the one-on-one opportunity. A great job by the quarterback, once again, locating the football. Having to pick which 6'5 guy you throw it to. 
and, they, and, and this is where they see, do. Why are, why are they questioning? If he, see, did the ball hit the ground? Hmm. Hmm. After review, the ruling on the That's field is confirmed. Touchdown. Looks like even though he juggled it, he, he's got his foot down when he falls. Well, it's, it's hard to say if his feet got off the ground before he secured it. All right. No, uh, he might, he might be down. out. They called it good. Called it touchdown. There you go. Boy, what a, another huge play right That's a dagger. That. That's oh, a dagger right there. There you go. There's, there's three touchdowns on big plays. That's right. So, you know, right now you, you couldn't say that, boy, Thompson has really established four yards, five yards, first downs. They're a big play explosive offense, and that's three touchdowns. Well, Clemson's got over 300 yards of offense in the first half, and, you know, Notre Dame and Only is, 42 rushing. Right. And how, how of that offense, how many came from those three plays? I don't know, but they all count. Yep. You had the two fade right. goals and then the down the middle. Yeah, and you know, the, it's like we said earlier, they have corner they post. just have too much skill. I mean, there's going to be it's hard to match up with those guys. You look in, and you look in that situation. The one thing Notre Dame could not give you know have is uh, allow them to have points there before the before the half, exactly. especially with Clemson getting the ball back. Um, I'm just glad Higgins is going to be around for a while because I really enjoy watching him play. He's such a good player. <laughs> you may you may get to see a lot of that back. <laughs> you know, you you look at the stat that stat board and you know six of ten on third down. True, yeah. true freshman, mm -hmm. semifinal game. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, it's a that, heck of a performance. That's, I think, what, I think 19 touchdowns now. Ross and uh, Higgins for the year. I mean, it's oh, they, they generate a lot of offense. And if you double them, now it opens up Renfro and it allows their, their run game to get going. Well, and Clemson's six out of ten on third down. Notre Dame's three out of nine. Right. It goes back to, like, what, you know, I was talking about before. Before the game, I think Notre Dame's best chance, they had to control the ball. If you give those skill guys that many kicks of the can, they're yeah. going to get you. Well, and then you have the, the little sky kick here. Yep, with two seconds, there's not much they can do with it. It's got to be the Hail Mary, and that's a little long for Hail Mary and when you can't protect. Taking the yeah, I think for the halftime. And they can try to get in at halftime and regroup after that last one that was a dagger that last touchdown yeah because you, you don't give it up it's even yeah, if you, you give up the field goal it's still right. a three score game well, guys we're going to take a quick break here but let's think about what adjustments you have to make now at halftime to start the second half if you're both teams guys let's go to a couple of key plays here in in the first first half of this ball game notre dame has got a fourth down and three Let's talk about it. We, we looked at it before. This is a key play because it's like a turnover when you don't make a fourth down. Yeah, what's interesting here is Notre Dame is in a, a five-man protection, so the quarterback going into it knows that he's hot or he's got to beat this rush here, and he's assuming the end is also coming. And so what that does is because he thinks he's hot and he has to beat the rush with the throw, he actually drifts to the right away from where he thinks the pressure is, and then when the end peels, he drifts right into where the, the pass rush is coming. So right now he's thinking, hey, it's a five-man protection. I'm hot off of 34. 34 rushes, I got to throw hot, and I'm going to work away from my blitz. And, and Bryant's all over him. And then now those guys are working the edges, yeah. and it leads him right into where he's drifting it's, to. It's really a good, uh, good pass pro by the O-line. I mean, 72 has no clue that the quarterback's going to work that way. I mean, they do a good job of sifting the, you know, sifting the, the protection. And, you know, they get the five on the five. Um, you know, it's a, like I said, you know, quarterback here Farrell. thought he was going to be hot. you got to be hot with your arm. You know, I know he's working his feet a little bit, but just runs into the, runs into the pressure. Yeah, you've got, either got to throw the fade ball before the rush gets there or throw hot to the boundary. Yep. And Colin Farrell disrupts the, the boundary route coming right. out of the backfield. It's just a smart football. It's yeah, heads up. A really good job. Really good job by, uh, by Clemson. I love the, you know, the, the technique. Something you don't – it doesn't you – know, you see man coverage, but when you look at the inside leverage by the, by the corner down here at the bottom, outside leverage by the safety taking away, denying the outside release, uh, I mean, it's pitcher perfect. I mean, it's a uh, – I think they do a great that, job. That is great and discipline just, there to stay uh, outside. Right. Well, and exactly. But the thing I, that I've always been impressed with with, uh, with Brent and what he does is 
when they bring the pressure, just the contain guy, Brian, yeah. coming up the field. Uh, he's not going to let the guy get away from it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and of course, when the quarterback rolls right into you, yeah. it helps. Well, but and, and team concepts here, you, this play by the Clemson defense led to a, uh, a Clemson offensive touchdown, which yeah. is. I mean, and the discipline of Colin Farrell, who's an elite pass rusher, to have a free rush, stop and take the back. If he doesn't do that, the wheel route is wide open down the right. sideline. I mean, arguably, that's so, the play of the game to this point. Yeah, three, three plays, plays later. later. Exactly right. So here we go. Notre Dame had the ball going in for some kind of points, for sure. There's your free safety. You get the stop. You're two over two. The free safety's cheating to the field. Your eyes immediately go back to the boundary, and you work your two on two. Then you get the one-on-one -on -one outside. You know, you notice that you know, a lot of the big plays have an attack on the right side of the field. You know, you have uh, uh, Vaughn in there at corner. I mean, it, you know, he's he had the the play right there before the end of the end of the first half. Here's the the, the big play ball down the field. You know, he's in good position. But, you know, great job by the Clemson receiver. It's too big and too strong. Well, you look at look at Vaughn six three two two eleven, and you know, but it just shows shows the skill shows the skill of these these Clemson receivers and the one on one matchups. Uh, you and know, I think Vaughn's the one they've hit both times. They, they have, and and that's something that you know that's one of those matchups. You know, the, the the thing about both these offenses trying to exploit the matchup, get the one on one opportunity, like we've talked about throughout the first half, and you know, these Clemson receivers have really shown up big. You've been around this Clemson offense a lot. How important are matchups? Oh, it's the key to everything, and that's what that's what makes you go. You know, you can you look at how how they're setting up the next play. You know, with the little five yard spot, the the run pass option, and it's all setting up to get the best one on one in that situation. And when you have guys uh, you know, at elite level, elite level skill like these receivers, um, and it's it's a challenge to stop. And eight and five look just alike. <laughs> when, when, they, when they hug in the end zone here, they they. Both both are they're I mean, about the same size. They're both they're, six four. Yeah. They're both two ten. Yeah, and real and fast and can catch. Right. Other than that. Other than and, that. And on, young. On this stage, the decisiveness of the quarterback to recognize it and know exactly where to go and throw that type of ball consistently. That, that's been the most impressive thing in this first half. I mean, the great skill players on the perimeter, that's, that's one thing. But the quarterback, his dis, this, the decision-making, I mean, everything on rhythm, everything on time. Right. Uh, in, even in the run game, where he's forced, he's forced this Notre Dame defense to have to account for him. Even though it's a little five-yard run here, six-yard run there, um, you know, it's slowing down everything on the perimeter. Well, guys, we've had uh, a great first half. We'll uh, come back in the second half, and uh, we'll, we'll talk. Before we start the second half, if you're Notre Dame, what adjustments do you make? What, what's the message to your team? If you're Clemson, got ahead. How do you stay ahead? But right now, we're going to flip it over to the B team with Coach Edwards and his guys sitting <laughs> in the green room. And, uh, and, and, and we're going to let them, uh, as soon as we come back for break, uh, we'll come back and let Coach Herman and the guys talk about the game tonight. Okay, great. Well, men, as we sit here and watch this uh, as the half ends, we see we have a tight ball game. Then all of a sudden, with a minute 44, Clemson scores. Here's one of the plays that they actually uh, made a big play on. they attacking their safeties uh, when you think about the job that uh, Clemson is doing against Notre Dame. Explain it to us here, Coach. Well, number one, they've been running the smash all the first half. They've been running the, the, the China, what we call a China, the, the five-yard out and then the corner route, and then got the safety to overplay the corner, and then they went back to the post mm -hmm. and got a big play to move down the field, get himself in a scoring position. So you, you're in a situation where they're really picking on the, the boundary corner, gets him an opportunity. He's going to overplay because he's been getting the China route. You can see him overplay it, and then they come back where he doesn't have any help. And this is the one, too, yeah. Coach, you mentioned about the foul. On the, uh, on, is this the rough in the passer one as well? Well, I think it is. got to see the end of the play here. But, you know, what Gary was talking about, too, just, just Renfro here working the safety. That seems to be part of their game plan right now is, is getting after those safeties a little bit with the inside guys. So really good job here uh, on the play. And this, this was a big chunk play for them now to get in field position for the shot at the end zone. And, coaches, we were mentioning even after this turn of events had taken place, the clock was the most important thing for, for Notre Dame and, and obviously gave Clemson some time, again, to get the ball back. And when they got the ball back, they threw the big touchdown pass right. to end the half. Well, yeah, I mean, Notre Dame threw the ball three times and 
and didn't really take any clock off and, and gave Clemson this opportunity to have a last drive. But that last play, again, a couple of interesting things to me. Number one, they hit that corner post cut. But what a great throw. Yes. I mean, that throw was yeah. right yeah. there. They, they dropped eight on that. That was drop eight coverage. And they, he, he dropped that ball right in there. That was number one. Then at the end of the play, the Notre Dame defensive end took out the quarterback. Yes. So on top of everything else, they tacked on a personal foul penalty. And that's, that's no talent stuff. That's just making bad decisions. And that bad decision put Clemson in an opportunity at the end to be able to take a shot at the end zone for the touchdown. And, 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 and that's the things that take no talent. I mean, right, you got to be right. careful and, about it. And, 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 and let's yeah, watch the last smart. play because this is pretty good coverage. Obviously, this is bump and run. they got nine seconds left on the clock. And they're going to throw one in the end zone. You know that. And you're in press coverage, which is, is, is tough. But here again, you got to make the play. This is a one-on-one -on -one play, corner and wide receiver. Corner makes a pretty good job of tipping the ball up, but the receiver makes a great catch. Yeah, it's just it's, it's just a one-on-one -on -one here. Safety works away because they're three-by-one, and so he's got his one-on-one -on -one matchup here in the boundary. And that's uh, that's T. Higgins, right? Yeah, T. Higgins. Five here, yeah. He, he's a obviously a very good player there. Great concentration on the ball. And, going and up it, and getting it and well, finishing the catch. They played zero free holes. They played zero free, exactly. And they brought five. So you, somewhere you're going to have a one-on-one. -on -one, and they're just, they tried to make it look like mm -hmm. he was going to get help. Then he rolled down the middle of the field, and the, and the quarterback did a great job of finding where the one-on-one -on -one was. Yeah, well, they dropped. They see him. They, they actually yeah. they brought four and dropped the back route last it, minute, probably spying the quarterback. For, exactly. You know, some sort of QB draw or something yeah. like that. But they dropped him out right here, and he's spying the Q. But, well, I mean, when you have a great player go up and make that play, I mean, that's pretty good coverage. It, it's great oh, coverage. It's a you know, great you play know. by him. It you was know, good. And, and I've, I've always himself. asked this question, you know, when you play bump and run, are you bumping? And if you are, you need to bump the guy. Well, he had he had free access, let the receiver off, got outside leverage on him, and he had to make a play. Corner played the ball pretty well, tipped mm -hmm. it up, but the receiver makes a great catch, and now they're in the half. They're great well, throw. Well, you're talking about. Right? Yeah. They gave him a too, too deep look. Yes. The guy rolls down in the hole. The, the, the linebacker shows up, takes some protection so that they have to do it. But really what he did for a freshman quarterback yeah. in this kind of a ball game to find where the one-on-one -on -one is, is is what you're trying to find right, out, which you, is unbelievable. He's so hot, this quarterback right he's now. Hot. I think I think Dave Clawson might have mentioned it. You know, mm -hmm. you might want to be careful in the second half how much you're running this guy right now because, I mean, his, he's on fire throwing the football. They have one of the best backs in America, uh, and they've got a great offensive line. I mean, you come out in the second half right now, I wouldn't – I'd try to limit the amount of shots this quarterback taking because he took a one – on that personal yeah. foul, that was an unbelievable shot. So I'd be I'd be careful with that. And what no, and what Notre Dame has to do now is slow the momentum of Clemson down because before the half, this was a ball game. I mean, it was no. a tight football game. It was what three to nine, and within a minute forty four seconds, Clemson goes up now mm -hmm. twenty two to three. It's a twenty point uh, difference now for these guys. So if you're if you're Notre Dame, you got to come out this second half and stop Clemson in this first drive. Do not allow them to move the ball down. The well, and you're also going to tell your team if they can do it, we can do it. If we get a couple breaks our way. You can come out in, a, in about a four-minute span that you can do something. There's no reason for them to panic. Yeah, we have to stop Clemson. They get the ball first coming out. Of the, let's gain some momentum. Let's make them punt, get field position, then let's go do something with it. But, you know, the first first five, six minutes of the second half will really be a telling tale of how this game's going to go because you want you want something positive for Notre Dame to happen. If you want, if you want the game to change, you're going to have to make a change early. Right. What are you doing well, offensively, Coach? Well, what Gary said, you know, number one, Clemson's got the ball. And I think Trevor now is 13 of 15 for 229 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah. So this guy is on fire, like you were saying. He's actually been, I don't know if he's the leading rusher, but he's ran the ball really well. I think for Notre Dame, one, you, you need to run the ball a little bit. you got to get the run game going, uh, take a little off of Ian Book. And then, you know, some of those easy throws, you'll get your shots if you can run the ball. They're going to have to move the ball down the field. They've got to try to get the ball back, move the ball down the field for Notre Dame, get into the red zone, and then, you know, whether they're running, throwing it, whatever it is they're doing at that point, they've got to, put, they've got to score touchdowns. And, and I think Notre Dame's capable of doing that. They've got firepower. They can do it. They're obviously facing a really good Clemson team, but they just need to settle back in, come out in the second half. They've got to have to do it. They could certainly win this game. They've got more time um, than they need. So they can get it done. Just they just got to get the run game going a little bit and, and let their quarterback settle in. Hey, how about it, coach? What you got? Well, I think Notre Dame can't panic here. I mean, I think Gary's right. I mean, you got to. We all know they got to come out and play a great series of defense. You got to get some field position, and then I think against a team like Clemson, who's got an elite defensive front, both rushing the quarterback and run defense. I think you got to run a little bit and run some play action pass. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to have to play action pass. That that's such an aggressive defense. I think the play-action pass will be there for them, but uh, but they can't panic. 
You know, they've got to play great defense. Don't panic on offense right now. You're okay. If you can play great defense here, you're all right. And we're not going to panic on this game, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about our game. Yeah. How about it? Alabama, big-time football team now, won a mm-hmm. lot of national championships against Oklahoma, high-scoring affair. Coach, you played against that Oklahoma bunch. Yeah, you know, it's uh, – it, I think it's going to – for Oklahoma to win, I think it's going to have to be a high-scoring affair. I don't think it's it was one of those where it's uh, – but, you know, it's – in a ball game like this, it's always it's always interesting to see. I think it really still comes down to who can run the football. When you're in a game like this, it doesn't make any difference. The guy control the football, get some takeaways. Uh, you're, both teams are gonna they have the kind of they have the kind of individuals that can make great plays. Both sides of the ball have great we have great skill set, and so the team that can make the takeaway, the one that can run the football, control a little bit, and then at the bottom line it comes down to. Uh, when they get inside the 25-yard line, who can play red zone defense? Talk to me, Coach. You guys are yeah. offensive guys. You got us well, the gurus over they, here. Tell now, me about it. Now, both these offenses are putting up 45, 50 points a game uh, average. But I think right now, you look at Alabama's defense. They, they, they're so tough. They're giving up 14, 15 points a game. And I think that's going to be the matchup now with just seeing what Kyler Murray and Oklahoma offense can do against this type of defense. And Tua and the Alabama offense, they're, they're consistent. They run the ball. They throw the ball. they got good balance every time I've watched them. And to me, it comes down to, you know, can Oklahoma move the ball against Alabama? And I think Kyler Murray can. This guy's a fantastic player. But will they be able to run the ball, or they got to get into where he's scrambling and have to throw it the whole entire time? That's really what it comes down to, in my opinion. How about it, Coach? I mean, I think, without a doubt, it's going to come down to defense. Yeah. And I think that uh, Alabama right now has the better defense. I think relative to Oklahoma with, with Murray, I think in order to have uh, a little bit more explosive su- success, he's going to have to be able to run the football a little bit, you know, to equate the numbers with the Alabama defense. But, um, you know, if, if, if you don't play any defense in this game, it's going to be a long, hard day. Mm. Coach mentioned that someone's going to have to play some defense eventually to make some stops, as we know, right? Yep. And I agree with you guys. It all boils down to this. Who plays the best in the red zone? That's who's going to win these football games at the end, right? So, yep. as we go. Hey, guys, we're in the dressing room now. We've just watched the first half. You're Dabo Sweeney. What's the message to your team, and what about adjustments? Well, you're telling them that, uh, you know, it's gone pretty well to now, but, uh, you know, you got 30 minutes to go to get exactly where you wanted to be when the season started. Way back, all the time that you spent in fall camp and all the the sweat and effort you've put in, uh, you got to finish the game. And the big thing, he's probably talking to them about running the football a little better. Uh, If there was anything they didn't do well in the first half, it was rush the football, and I'm sure that he's telling them that this first series of the second half is going to be huge to go out, try to regain the momentum. If they can take it down and score, they can probably end the game right here. So you don't talk about Alabama or the national championship game yet? No, not at all. Brian Kelly, you're disappointed. You're beaten down a little bit. How do you pick them back up? We're we're 12-0. We belong in this football game. There's a lot of football left. I think uh, offensively, you got to give those kids on the outside a chance to make more plays. And defensively, just don't let the ball over your head. Uh, Clemson has really not been able to sustain long drives. Keep it in front of you and give yourself a chance to get off the field. And what do you do with the man coverage as compared to zone? I, I, you know, this is, they're, they're defending a little bit of a different skill kid than they have all year. And I think they found that out the hard way. And, and you still mix it in. It's what you do, but you can't make a living doing it. Okay. You and Chip Long kind of raised together. He was your guy. He left. He goes. What does he do in the second half? Because he can't throw it every time. He can't block them. What does he do? You got to get in rhythm, and you have to maintain your balance. Uh, You know, you got to you got to calm the quarterback down. You got to talk to book. Uh, You know, they've had some opportunities with a downfield throw, so you know that's going to be big and be able to connect that. But you can't let this Clemson pass rush tee off on you. So you got to maintain your balance, but just get in rhythm and continue to do what's got you to this point. Biggest game, uh, biggest thing about the second half: start over, right? Absolutely. Zero zero, men. We can't do anything about what's already been done. Uh, and Brian Kelly has to sell his team on him being confident enough that they can win. Yeah, it's you, you got to get a stop. Yeah. The, their chance to get back in this game is if they can get a three and out, get the ball, and just get points, okay, here we go. Restart. First two possessions are going to be critical. Uh, get the stop, go down, and have something positive, positive happen offensively. 
um, you know, will really thrust Notre Dame back in the game. Yeah, your Clemson's offense, you're probably not going to run Trevor Lawrence as much with a 23-3, a 20-point lead here until you have to. If it's a critical down, third and one, third and, and three in down. the red zone, I mean, it's, if it's a critical down, I don't think you're going to see a first and ten, second and schedule quarterback run. And, Mike, we just keep doing the same thing. No with question. I mean, offense, you, you, right? for, you keep putting it in, in Trevor Lawrence's hands. He's made great decisions throughout the game uh, with the spot throws, easy perimeter. Here it is to start off, like, you know, get yourself in a second and manageable. Just let him control the game. Keep, it, keep the playbook simple for him. Um, you know, he's, he's playing like a true vet right now. Zone first down on Notre Dame. Keep it too, in front of him. Be aggressive. Yep, right away. It was two, two deep safeties, and the corner read the out release by two and jumped it right away. And But, but all that is is a four-yard little, little perimeter run. I mean, it's a, the run-pass option. Uh, you know, Lawrence did a good job getting the ball out of his hands. Uh, you know, th- those are the things that you have to keep keep the Clemson offense also in rhythm, uh, taking what Notre Dame's giving them. Zone again. Yep, two deep again. Well, they've done a great job attacking the middle of the field. You're really... You see Clemson, you know, here once again, you get the, the, the matchup of the, the talented receiver there in the slot against the, the Notre Dame safety. You know, can't let them get, beat you back inside. Uh, High low route, you've got the underneath guy and yeah. Renfro. They're all over him, Ooh, or so, not Renfro, the other receivers. So then you've got uh, the deep route behind him. Cause yeah, you, we uh, call those the, the idiot routes. You, you jump the four-yard hitch and you <laughs> give up the 16-yard dig. I like it, except if I was on defense. Oh, there we go. There's the play. Oh, did it hit? Let's see here. I tell you, that's the one thing. When you run the RPO with the pin and pull scheme, sometimes you get those linemen that get up the field and get penetration. There's really not a, a natural throwing lane when you're when you're pulling people on the RPOs. Again, this one's huge, guys. It, it hit the ground, I think. Well, that's that's tough. Yeah, it that's looks close. like it hits the ground. They must have called it, ruled it an interception on the field. Yep. The ruling of an interception is under further review. Well, that would be huge, but but it'd be uh, second down, second ten, if not. Right. So a good stop by Notre Dame either way. This was off of a play action. Well, it's really a with run an, pass. It's really an RPO that they're yep. reading that linebacker number four, and as he flows with the guard, now they have the sight lane outside. The problem here for Clemson is that that backside nose guard got penetration, and he's in that throwing alley. RPO with a counter sweep. And you're just reading number four, and if he flows, you know you have the numbers to the perimeter. Once again, great job by the defensive lineman getting the ball up. Question is. Hard to tell from that angle. It really is. Can't tell if the. That one looked like it maybe hit the ground. It's going to be a hard one. And as you said before, uh, Paul, it was ruled an interception. And that, that's usually a, a very safe play. After review, the defender never maintained possession throughout oh. the catch. Ball hit the ground between his hands, therefore, <laughs> a complete pass. Ball will be returned to the previous spot where it'll be second down. Need a break. Please reset the game clock to Need 13. Need a break if you can really Notre Dame. give them a chance to get back in the game. Phil looks like Clemson's come out doing the same stuff. RPO, hitch. Yeah, that's the first time we've seen them with the with the pin and pull run pass uh, option. You know, uh, I think you just continue to come back. You know, getting the, getting your two by two. You are putting the formation in the boundary, making the, make it the simple, uh, you know, you know, one to two read for the quarterback. This is the uh, that sprint draw they run. We're going to be third down and nine. And then you notice now that Clemson's in that three-by-one set. 
and Notre Dame plays two over one to the X. And they're going to force the ball to bounce to the field. And this is usually a play they wind back when they run it. Big down for Notre Dame. Field position down. Got to have a stop. Start second half. Yeah, they're just they're start, they're showing single high again. They still got like the press at the man. bottom. They've been aggressive aggressive in these situations yeah, throughout the game. Here they come. Yep, there you go. They stay in it. There you go again with the fade. another fade. And they got it. That's it. Yeah, it's a big play. Yeah, I, I tell you, Troy Pride has, has really had a, a a good year for them though. He's He's, gone, he's done this week after week and held out more than he hasn't. That's a heck of a play right there. And, and to come back and do that after the first half shows you there's some fight in him. You know, you look throughout the game, a lot of those situations on the third downs, you know, Clemson's really attacked the boundary and uh, went after Vaughn. You hear they go back to the field uh, uh, in that situation and you know, uh, your pride showed up big there. And it doesn't look like Clemson's mentality is to come out and just run the football and be physical and try to control the game. They're going to run their offense. No, no yeah, you said it's very simple, but mm -hmm. they're going to run the run pass options. And if the run's not there, we're going to throw the ball. And, and here, even in this situation, you know, getting the ball, I'd have to, I mean, yes, they got stopped on the third down, but they still were able to flip the field. And now Notre Dame starting inside the 15 yard line. Uh, I think that's still a good possession for Clemson. And they were able to get to that point by the run pass, the easy option throws for, for Lawrence. Um, you know, now Notre Dame has to drive the field. Yeah, it, it's too early in the game to start draining clock. There we go. Well, thought, I thought the quarterback had a chance if he pitched it out here late, you know, come to attack. It's a good, good fill by the safety. And, and they're handling the bubble and the sights with their nickel in the corner. You know, once again, it comes down to the one-on-one -on -one game, just like we talked about with Clemson. Uh, you're there earlier. Made two, second and eight. It'll be about third and four, probably. Yeah, if they're, if they're going to get back in this game, it, it's going to be Boykin or Claypool that come up with a big play on the outside. Good job by Clemson taking away the shot. Now third and five. Huge, can't give it back to him at midfield. And this has been um, a third and th a three for nine on third downs. <clears throat> a little different. They looking at the looking at the prior five, another five man uh, trips to the field with a tight end. They, ooh, they had to dig wide open. Oh, what a play! What a play! He made, what a made play. the first down. Great first down. That is that. a great play. Good play and good spot. Yeah, that's 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 where you see that you know Notre Dame spreading the field. You know, you miss miss Look the, at the dig. Missed it early, but uh, you know by spreading the field horizontally, it opens up the run lanes for the quarterback. Does a good job working up and creating a creating the first down conversion. You wonder if Ian's getting out of there a little bit uh -oh. too quick because of things like this too. But another good play by him. Yeah, I mean you can tell the quarterback to hang in there, but yeah. you watch the Clemson <laughs> film and yeah. you got uh, yeah, Darrell and Wilkins and hey, well, Mike, Bryant. Hey, and you hang in there. You hadn't been out there with me. You, you, I theory think, and reality. I think Clemson confused him on the third down, and he made he made a play. Yeah, this sec that. second time you see Wilkins beat beat the left tackle underneath. You know, once in a run game earlier uh, here in the past in the past pass pro. A little pressure now. Pass interference. Yeah, that's that's a a yeah and this is they just gotta they gotta keep working this. These kids on the outside can make plays. They've got great ball skills. They're not going to run by you but they can win jump balls. And it's similar to what Clemson does. It looks different because of the, it's, it's a size and strength matchup. It's not necessarily a, a speed matchup. Well, and Clemson won the 50% jump balls in the first half, and Notre Dame's got to win them the second half. And this, and this is just another, I, mean, I, I really like this play call, second and short. You've got the run pass option, gets the one-on-one -on -one backside. You, you see Clemson bringing the pressure. Well, obviously a big conversion here. Yeah, and that's one thing that you can never relax against Clemson's defense. I mean, he is never just going to sit there and play vanilla and let you get comfortable. And Notre Dame's not the type team to just jump back in this thing. They're going to have to work their way back in. 
Delay draw. It's a good play, though. And this is what Notre Dame has to do. They've got to stay balanced. They right. can't let Clemson tee off on them. You know, really good job getting here to the second level, freezing the backers. And, and that's where, when you, when you run the draw like this, you take advantage of those ends getting up the field. Even though this is a, not a design draw, just look at the edges, how quickly Clemson sets the edge. As you can see, spreading the field horizontally once, once Clemson's backers remove themselves, you know, it opens up big, big run lanes for the quarterback uh, on the scramble. So Book's really having a good start to the second half. Fake draw. Well, here's a there shot. you go. Take the shot. Take the shot. Take the shot. And, and then be interference Adam. again. Yeah, it was an underthrow. Like. It was underthrown. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, a, that's a third vertical shot that, that's been missed. You know, uh, it, it really like the play call. You have the safeties. You know, you saw earlier safeties attached in the climb route, one-on-one -on -one with the extra receiver. And these are the game. These these are the plays you have to hit in games like this. And uh, you know that this is a seven seven pointer right here. Even with that throw, though, if you look at it, he didn't really quite set his feet. He was still. Yeah, that's another touchdown if he gets it to him. Yeah, watch the edge rush. <laughs> oh, what I'd live here if he can get away. Nope. Just such speed. Yeah, and you just look at the, the field speed end on there. Speed on speed. The other thing Clemson does such a great job of is anticipating the snap count. And they do this offside. against everybody the that they. Oh, well, they call them offside. Did they? Yeah. Repeat second down. It had to be Bryant. Well, that's a huge break. Notre Dame takes time off the clock. Keeps Clemson's offense off the field. Get its back, gets it back to 23-10 here. Got us a game. You, you see again, Clemson really waits so Notre Dame gets lined up in the formation before they get the call in. Got the X done inside here. Notre Dame really did a good job of picking it up with the two linebackers. And the thing you notice with Clemson is just how many people are squeezing the box. I mean, they, you know, Notre Dame's going to have to capitalize on the on the vertical shot down the field. Here you look at the slot receiver uh, working his eyes into progression. You know, it's coming open on the dig. You know, that's that's where Notre Dame's going to have to be able to attack. A little unusual here now. Formation of the boundary, two backs. Third and two. Get ready for the jump. There you go. You tried to get a throw back there. Oh, got a false start. Oh, motion, yeah. False start on Notre and, Dame. And that's one of those specialty plays that you practice and practice, and you hope to have them you be the a right guard. Break, uh, breakdown, and then the Left false start on it. Five yard penalty. Just Still like the down. snag and go they missed. So it was the left guard? I think it was the right guard, maybe. Yeah, it didn't. Hard to see. But they were trying to throw the old uh, throwback there. Yep. I think Clemson had it pretty well covered, though. Third down and seven. I, I think they're in four down territory here, though. Okay. I agree. Yeah. I mean, it's, you can run it here, get two or three yards, go for it, fourth and five or less. Run, yeah, run. Spot. Nope. No. No. Waiting on that. Great adjustment by. Coach Venables in here, you know, you, the, the quarterback run got him on the earlier. Now, instead of bringing spy. pressure, it just spies, it spies 11 down for Book. You know. In this still, situation, you yeah. like to see the running back get out. I still think with all the Tampa 2 that they're they're playing, he's some, at some point you got to take a shot down the move. And this guy's 34 coming. Had 11 step up. Now they're going mm -hmm. field goal. <clears throat> Worry about uh, long 50, field goals being 55 blocked. Fifty-five yarder. These can and, be blocked, and they, and they will charge those A and B gaps to the side of the kick. Yep. Watch the penetration here. Seemed to be a little confusion on the Clemson side. For the snap, timeout Clemson. Their first timeout of the half. But even if you're you're Clemson here, even if they kick the field goal, you still have a three-score lead. You know, it's still 17, which is why that touchdown before the half. Yeah, I mean, even if you hold it to a field goal, it's 16. It's a two-score game. You've burned off half the third quarter already. Yeah. And you've said with the 
the length of their defensive linemen and their penetration, right. a 50 plus yard field goal can be blocked so easily and run back for a touchdown. Well, that's the other concern here as you're looking at it. Of course, you're fourth and nine. That's the other. There's not much option there. You had to get it's, something out yeah, of that. You had to get not a lot of good options. Yards. <laughs> no, no. Used to say, what's your best option on third and 25, not get in it? All right, exactly. I used to get a real kick out of, they talked about our option offense wasn't good on third and long. I'm what like, is? Which, which ones are? Yeah, which ones are? You, you were never in third and long. <laughs> You think there's any possibility here for a fake on fourth and nine? I think I think that's one of the I, reasons Clemson yeah. called timeout because they were all around the line of scrimmage. Right. And Dabo said, "Let's don't be stupid. Let's pressure up the middle and keep our yeah they they were guys outside soft. They like. were misaligned. They they had a few gaps uncovered into the boundary there. Yep. And so. they had a deep returner. I don't know if they were setting up for their possible uh, you know their field goal Huge return. Punt. Yeah. Yeah. And so. <clears throat> But you play this conservatively. You don't want to rub the punter or rub the kicker. Uh, you don't want to give them an opportunity for a fake. Yeah, I mean this is this is middle block. It's a it's a yeah. long field goal. Traditionally, with long field goals, the trajectory of the kick is going to be lower. And up the middle. Yeah, up, up the middle. So you know you get your your push. You get your jumpers. Notre Dame might be going to their punt team. Looking yeah, I don't. I don't think you kick a field goal here if you're Notre Dame. If you're not going to go for it, I think you try to punt them down there deep. Yeah, you're exactly yep. right. That's and what they're doing. <clears throat> which, which means that it it, uh, it it could have been a fake. That's a possibility since he well, changed probably that. pooch punt maybe out of that formation. If... Yeah, pooch punt or fake. Right, probably one of the two. Clemson leaves their defense out there. Huge stop by the Clemson defense. Huge stop. No points. And this needs to be an inside the 10 punt. Oh, yep. Oh, God. Perfect. At, at this point, if you're Clemson, if, if you can just get two first downs, that's a win. Yep. Get it on the other end of the 50. Other end of the field. I think that was a smart play by Notre Dame. Now, if they get a stop, they're going to get the ball back. And, you know, if you can get it down to two scores by the time the fourth quarter starts, you have a chance. You know, if you're, if you're Notre Dame, you just look at, you look at the missed opportunities on the vertical right. shots, and they are there. I mean, Clemson is definitely playing the underneath coverage, yeah. giving you the one-on-ones. Uh, as this game progresses, you know, you're going to have to capitalize on a couple of those opportunities. But, uh, you know, the game's not over. Turnovers, third downs. Um, and a couple of shots. Explosive plays. Explosive plays. Yeah, and you just, you don't get the feeling that they're going to get an explosive play in the run game. No. You know, it just this. And that's this. what people thought. Could, could Dexter Williams get the get the explosive play? We haven't seen him. Yeah, and it no, just, they're getting nothing on the ground. The speed at which Clemson closes and runs alleys and reduces space, you know, it's really hard to, and, and they're a good tackling football team. Other than that, <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, the, the reality of it is, you know, I've been in the league now five years, and I mean, this to me was the best Clemson team we played. It was better than the team that I thought won the national championship. Now, you know how that is relative to who they end up playing. I don't know, but I mean, this and, and part of the reason was their offensive line has become really good. I think when I first got in the league, their skill was outstanding. They had really good perimeter, but their offensive line was good, not to the level of the rest of their football team. Now their offensive line is like the rest of their team. You know, they have a bunch of, uh, of all-conference players on the O-line, and Mitch Hyatt has been a great tackle for them. And, um, well, and, and, I, and we love coaching. These two guys are good people. They're, they're, they're great people. They're, they're great coaches. They, they care about the game. They do it right. And coaching matters. You just look at Notre Dame right there. It, it, people that are watching, you don't punt a ball down to the one-yard line because you're lucky and have a guy there catching it. I mean, these, these guys are so well coached. And um, for, for people to even be critical of a performance in a playoff game is foolish because these two teams are undefeated. 
This is high level football. It is high level football, and and one of them to this point has got better players than the other. Well, and I don't, I don't think you underestimate the and, the level of play. I mean, you look at Trevor Lawrence, what he's done in this game. Uh, you know, the explosive because the difference in the game is explosive play. Both team, both defense have played well at, at times, but you know, you take the three big plays by. Uh, uh, by this Clemson offense and the missed opportunities by the Notre Dame offense. And, you know, that's for a true freshman on this stage. But but think about coaching matters because they both changed quarterbacks exactly right. because they didn't think it was best for them. And both of these quarterbacks have led them to undefeated seasons. And, mm-hmm. and it does matter. And there were hard decisions. And when they made them, people were very critical at some points because they weren't sure it was going to work. Well, the only way it works is if you end up playing in a game like this. That's exactly right. <laughs> then nobody, nobody ever remembered questioning that decision. Notre Dame can get a stop here or, or even better, a turnover. I think they could get back in the game a little bit. Yeah, this is huge, though. They can't let them get off the goal line. Ooh. Mm. Oh, yeah, this, Close. Notre Dame front's done a, done a nice job. I mean, yeah, this, this, is, really one, this a, is a that's two a little, away. That's a little A-gap blitz there that they're bringing the weak safety down as the, the other A-gap player. And, and this is where Gillum is really good. He, he does a nice job of, of playing like a linebacker in their blitz game. And really, that ball should have been spilled outside to him. And what you said, Paul, is so true. Every time a Clemson player touches it, you say, ooh, because mm-hmm. you're afraid he might run. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's, that's a great right job there. of a run pass. Just, you, see, you see Notre Dame squeezing. You know, they have every hat in the box. Got the one-on-one on the perimeter. and great Clean, Cleans great it up. And that's where that's, I think the first time Clemson has been on a, a two tight end on the ball set that you get that soft perimeter matchup. And accurate, get, smart, quick release. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's Notre For Dame's best quarterback. And that's their best corner, Love. You notice they're playing a little bit more soft coverage out on the perimeter. They've been hurt by the, by the vertical shot. Where it's also very impressive that uh, Clemson's play callers trust Trevor Lawrence. Because to throw that ball off, from off the, the end goal zone, line. off the goal line, two-yard right. line, I mean, they, they trust him. Trust him completely. The, the one thing Clemson does a great job of is the bulk of their offense, they carry week to week, and I think it's really allowed Lawrence to get comfortable with what they do. They're, they're not a team that comes out every week with 15 new plays. Well, you wondered about the quarterback run game. There it was. I mean, yep. he got to give Reed, but you could see him going to load the quarterback, the yep. guy that was responsible for the quarterback. So He was reading it. He was. And that's what makes, that's what makes I mean, the, both these offenses go, is when you, can, when you can force the defense to account for the quarterback, which I don't think they want Trevor Lawrence to be the one carrying it, obviously handing it off to, to Etienne, but um, you sit there and you're, you're accounting two hats for Lawrence, and now you get your, your matchup. You know, it's a great job by the receiver down here versus trap coverage. You know, not a, not a dev- devastating block by any means, but just to get him pinned, let Etienne get to the outside. You know. Well, and athletes, Mike, this is an RPO to the left. No question. And he bounces it back all the way to the right. It, it, it's really a three-level read. I think the first read is, is the slot covered. If no, the ball goes out there. If it is, it becomes the zone read on the end. And ends up cutting all the way back to the boundary. Okay, there's single high press again. That's a big play. Yeah, huge they play. needed that play. And they and played man and brought them. Yeah, a little interesting now. They, they played outside press on the X instead of inside press, which forced Lawrence to hold on to the ball a fraction of a second longer. Well, and ETN's a young sophomore back that didn't uh, protect as well but if, against if you, Tony. If you watch this on the thing here that they've been playing, if you rewind that, they've been playing uh, outside press, inside press, and they played outside press there. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. You know, here's third down and 17. Here's one of the plays. You know, Notre Dame's trying to trying to fit things with a five-man box. The quarterback goes to throw throw the perimeter. Uh, Mike, why call uh, why call this on second and seventeen? You know, I, I think they believe it's a high percentage. Get a four to five. <laughs> you know, try to get you in a in more of a third and third down and manageable. Uh, what do you call, Mike? <laughs> 
You gotta, Trouble. You gotta get it out. But uh, so here's here's two high a two high shell. Notre Dame uh, get rid of it. Yeah. Just really a smart decision by the quarterback there. You know, you get you get flushed, you know. Just don't take it don't risk putting the ball in jeopardy in, in that situation. Not a whole lot of fun on third and seventeen. You know, the, the big play there was the sack on first down that got him so far off schedule, which allowed Notre Dame to, to play off a little bit more. And they're actually getting pretty good pressure on the quarterback without bringing a lot they of are, people. They? A little, a little twist there. Two games up front. Yeah. So big stop by Notre Dame. The one first down was key there, but got this off the goal be, line. This will be the drive of the game here. Notre Dame wants to get back in it. They've got to get points, starting off the great field position. Yeah, if they can get back to two scores here in the third quarter, it's make, yeah. it, make it a game. Well, as we get ready to go to break, it's, uh, uh, it's interesting that Clemson's kind of hanging in there. Still got a lot of football left. Yeah, they just, at some point, they've got to make it a two score game. Okay, guys, what if you're, uh, uh, Dave, talk to me about your Notre Dame right now. You've got the ball back, 549. Got to make something happen. Huge drive. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you're just, you're running out of time. And at, at some point, you, you got to get points on the board. I think you've got to make a first down. You've got to get in a rhythm. And then you got to go back and take a shot with Boykin. Yeah, Paul? I think the same thing. I think you still have time to run your offense. I don't think you have to get uh, in a big hurry. If you, can, if you can score on this drive, I think you put yourself back in position to have a chance to, to win the game. Mike? You know, just play. That's exactly right. You know, there's still plenty of time. Uh, you've had to, you've had the down the field opportunities. Uh, you got to get the got to get rolling. Got to get in that rhythm, and then uh, you'll capitalize on the one on one. But you nearly have to score here. No, you, you, you got to get something you, positive. You do because Before if this gets to the fourth start, quarter we'll and you're one dimensional and you have to throw it, they're and not gonna those kids can tee up. No. These are things you can't have. You know, the, uh, yeah. the, the P and 10, P and 10 penalty puts you in long yard situation. No, you, now you're, you're first and 15 and you're one dimensional if you're not careful because you put yourself in a, in a bad spot with guys that you cannot protect well against. It's interesting. Clemson only has 49 rushing yards in the game and it's, it's just who they are right now. And it's also who Clemson is in terms of defending the run. Yes. Oh, that's a that's, good run. That's a yeah, very good, good play. Run. And good by Chip that he's not going to change. He's going to come out and be smart with it. Probably going to go a little bit quicker tempo now oh, without yeah. panicking. Oh, I would pick oh, it up a little bit. Just, just you know, for the, to keep a competitive advantage here, here putting formation into the, into the boundary with the, and the two tight end shift. Good potential shot here. Here's the play action off the, the pin pull. And what a great job by Clemson. They, they're trying to get that back down on the wheel route. Oh. Yep. That, that was well covered. Barely got out, covered like a blanket. Well, and Notre Dame's keeping seven men in protection. Yeah. <clears throat> so. And because they have to. That's the other thing. Oh, exactly. A lot of times people don't understand. Why don't they have more people open? Well, they're. Got Nine, I'm mm. blocking. All right. That's the reason, because they're trying to block those guys up front. It's a big play in the game right here. Pressure. There we go. Mm. Oh, what a play. What a run, because that's a missed tackle there. Right. They're, they're off the field. Yep. Well, these are things that Notre Dame's got to be able to stick with. You know, third down version, running the football, you know, the, on the second and long, hit the big run with Williams. Uh, you know, get – Get the momentum going. Get the uh, you know obviously guys feel a lot of confidence. It means keeping balanced, and then you're going to get your you're going to get your down the field shot as it comes. And Clemson can't get bored here. Got to keep playing. Smash there route. Good first down call. You got the, you have the quick quick option with the with the possible hitch down here to the boundary. They take away the hitch with the corner. Right there's a seven cut opening up. You got the reverse smash, and that's the one thing that kid gives you. It gives you that whole other layer of throwing that, that high ball rather than have to drop it in the bucket. And they've overcome the first and 15 for the motion penalty. Okay. Just no negative yardage plays. No negative yardage plays. I think the big difference is, you know, when he pulls it down, he just can't get away. 
like we've talked about all day, there's just so much speed on the on the other side. Like here, he pulls it down. He looks like maybe he's got a chance, but Bryant just kind of walks him down. And Notre Dame's been real aggressive on these first down calls and inside the inside the uh, red zone or pushing the landmarks, so, you know. But put with these second down and longs, we got to we got to be efficient and. Uh, no backs. Empty cover zero. Empty Drop cover the zero. Get goes. rid of it. No, 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 no. I think he's going to call him down. Or nope. It's going to call intentional grounding. Yeah, it's well, it's funny. Bo both of these teams have one of their automatics to empty is the same blitz. Mm-hmm. Notre Dame ran the same blitz. You look uh, early in the game. Only a two-man rush. You know that you could see all the all the Clemson D linemen, you know, basically tag the line, make sure they have the five accounted for, and then everybody drops out for the under hot throw. Yeah, and the hot there had to be the, the field immediately. No question. You know, because they were sliding the protection to the boundary. The tackle to the field was in a double read. He sees the linebacker coming. You have to know you're hot off of that and, guy. And these are the things that show up. And you know, you get bowl games, you get a little extra time to prepare. Uh, this is a great job by the Clemson, Clemson staff of, of knowing what's coming. And, yeah. and well, look, he, yeah. he's trying to throw under there. Yeah, I think yeah, he's but, trying to throw the and, the, and they're the, all over him. The hot route to the drag, and they take it away. It's just, and I'm sure, great defense. Now they got a three-man rush. Oh no! Oh boy! Uh oh! Get him on the ground. Get, get, get. Third and third and twenty-two against uh, this group is, is not going to be fun for any any offensive mind. And now you just you're in a spot in the game that you feel like you have to make a play, and yep, you're you're forcing something. Good job getting him on the ground. Got those big guys scattered out. That's a dangerous thing. If you're playing quarterback for Notre Dame right now, you feel like you, they got 12 out there. Everywhere you look, uh, it closes so quickly. And that's the thing is that you, you sit there and you look at that sequence of plays. I mean, they bring a true man rush, and they got four underneath where you're right. trying to get the ball out. And like like you're saying, it's just you know there there they drop eight, and you know you try to fit the ball into a window, but just the speed of Clemson is uh, you know really showing up. Uh, and Clemson hurt themselves here again. Kids get excited. They took the helmet off. And got a, a personal foul. Well, this will give them something to coach off of. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. They <laughs> needed something to yeah, right right about. So far, after your interception, I'm going to jump you for. There's right now. There's not a lot of negatives for them in this game. No, very impressive. 304 left in the third quarter, and now you start running the ball, and Notre yeah. Dame's going to be tired, and worn out because they've been out there too much. Yeah, and they they really. Haven't gotten NTN going at all yet. No. I mean, the amazing thing is you're in this game. Your your best tailback has not even I don't think 50 yards yet, and you've won this game on the strength of your freshman quarterback right yep. now. Yep. Who's really played flawless. And your young receivers and your defense. There, there you go. Coach, Coach Johnson, the old triple option right, right. here. There you yeah, go. Pulling all the way to the pitch. Different way of running it. DeAndre Overton from uh, right near Wake Forest. That's, he's the, the third outside receiver they play. That is 6'4", 210. Is that a requirement? I, it must be. At their position, for... if you're not 6'4", 210, they won't list you as a, uh, Except for an X receiver. As an X. He's a slot. He can play well, a slot. He, yeah. you move and, back in. and he was a walk-on. Oh, he was? Yeah. It was a good walk off. Big third down right here. Oh, uh -oh. oh, there we go. Oh, boy. You know, and that's just, this just shows wow. the impact, the impact of Trevor Lawrence in the run game. Right here, he comes off the mesh, pulls, pulls the, the, watch the backer scrape for him. You get the backer, you get the backer removing the scrape for the quarterback, and you get the defense alignment cut off, and then there you have the explosive touchdown. Yeah, you can't make it. Yeah, a there, there, there's a misfit here. It looks like they well, have a backside A gap player. The seven technique gets scooped by the yeah. tight end or gets cut off. Uh, I didn't know that teams who ran these offense did those kind of blocks. Yeah, there. Oh. <laughs> just, just. That was a nice block by the tight end to get the guy cut off. 
that's a that's a great series there by Clemson. You know, letting the offense work. You, know, you saw the triple option with the pull, the late pitch, then coming back off the uh, with the with the read there, cutting the cutting the read key, but forcing forcing Notre Dame's defense to, to once again have eyes on sixteen. And, that's when you give up the big one. Yeah, it was a misfit there, though. That backside linebacker, I think, had the A gap, and he looked like he was playing the quarterback. Okay, what do you do now? You're Notre Dame. I mean, Guys, keep playing. We got well, a lot of pride. I'd say you're, you're 12 and 0. You're in the you're the semifinal game. You're not playing this thing to try to keep it close. I mean, I would I, right now. I'd, play. I'd I'd be in attack or two minute. Treat it like two minute. That you're. It's a four score game and. Heck, try to score as fast as you can. Get a few onside kicks. And you gotta go, you you gotta go with one minute, but you gotta be smart because you can't I'd, protect I'd, them. So I'd, you. Yeah, I disagree. I think you just tell your guys to keep playing and and you you try to play. I mean, you go out there and get in one minute and go three and out. This thing can get ugly really really fast. You, what about you, Mike? You you have to have the spark. I mean, you know, you have to keep keep the. Find the positive play, and uh, you know the Notre Dame's a tempo offense. They they understand that you know if they go out there and 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 execute one time down the field, get points on the board, you know you know get the ball in the end zone, you know, then you see what happens here in the fourth quarter. But the, I, I do agree, you don't go you don't go just sell out to to spreading these guys out, let them tee off on you because you know it's one of the most ta- talented defensive front that college football seen in a long time, and you know you you're. If you just let these guys tee off, it's going to be it's going to be tough. Tough. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, can you, you promise need, you're not going to protect against these you need guys. Four possessions to win this game, and I still think. And you've got to stop them. You're 12 and 0. No you question. work so. I mean, you, you got to play to try to win it. I mean, I don't think at this point, if it gets ugly, it gets ugly. Well, but, I'm not saying you don't try to win the game, but I'm I'm you know you can try to if you line up and play. They've had some shots and they're still getting some press situations. You know, you can do that, but I'm just saying you go out and you, you spread out and you get in one-minute offense and get, get back there in the gun and let those guys tee off. Yeah, I, I, still, I think you still mix in some runs. I don't right. think it becomes all throw. Yeah. But part of the problem with Clemson is when you don't go fast and you let these kids get in stances and get a feeling for the snap count, they're harder to block then. Yeah, I, I do think that you're – your team needs to know that you gave them a chance to win when they right. got in trouble. So that that's the the biggest part of this. The uh, I, I think that it's overwhelming that everybody thinks Clemson's going to win a game, and and that's pretty much done in everybody's mind. You can't let your kids feel that way. I want to see the same effort on the last play of the game that I saw on the first play of the game. So you are who you are. So you give me all you've got. Don't blink. Don't look at the scoreboard. Uh, you go back and keep playing. Yeah, you get the, you, you have to have the spark play. You have to have the positive. You build off the positive. Defense goes out there, try to create a takeaway. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. There's still a lot of time left in this game. Uh, you, you know, two of the two of the best coaches in college football. You know, they're going to they're going to keep their teams uh, you know, locked in and working to the finish. I, I just think if, if you're Clemson now, if you get the ball in offense, you, you start to take the air out of the ball a little bit. And, that's, and, and they have a slow tempo, right? They're not fast, fast, fast. Everybody, everybody talks about got to go fast. No, they're, to... they're not hyper fast. No. They, they mix in tempo enough that you've always got to be prepared for it. And, you know, Dabo was talking to the running backs there. I'm sure he was saying, we've got to run the ball. We're going right. to be more physical here in the fourth quarter. Take care of the ball. Yeah. You, know, you a, keep both both hands on that ball. The only way you lose the game now is if you you turn it over. Yeah. And, that, and that's been one of the keys. You look at you look at third down conversions. Clemson's uh, seven of thirteen, no turnovers. Yeah. You know Notre Dame five of thirteen, two turnovers. Yep. Football's not complicated. People are. You know, it'll, just, it'll be interesting what their tempo is now. Yeah, and it looks like they're gonna. They're not in a rush. They're gonna be about the same. But this is pick op- it up a little bit. This is an offense that operates, you know, at a fast tempo. You know, it's not gonna be anything foreign to their guys if you just keep playing. You know, uh, make sure everybody's everybody's on the same page. I mean, I like I like the I like the attack here. This is something that you know, I think they could they could continue to do throughout. Uh, you got you know you get the first down. You got the positive play. You know, really let's you know. Just continue to execute the offense. Well, and Clemson's got some backups in there. That their backups are better mm-hmm. than most people's well, that, starters. And they, they do a great job of playing a lot of kids, even if it was a one-score game. Uh, 
But Notre Dame's, they're well coached. They've got tremendous pride. They'll keep playing. Like you said, you don't win 12 games and get this far without right. having good team <clears throat> chemistry and great leaders. And, and the thing that's so challenging here is that you Clemson with their team speed, and they can they can truly force you to have to earn it. And uh, you know, I, I expect that they'll still add a pressure here and there. Um, you know, speaking of which, but they did. You know, yeah, it's even in situations like this, Venables never calls off the dogs. Yeah. I mean, he, he plays and calls every snap like the game's on the line. And this is another example. You're up 27, and... Well, that's a dead play from the start. I mean, you know, it's a zone read, but... Unblocked player. Yeah, you got the quarterback player coming hard, too, so... So now you're third and 14. Don't be stupid again. You got to be something uh, underneath and try to run for the first down. Yeah, now they're going again. Yep. yep. Forcing the, forcing the hot throw and, and obviously doing a great job of rallying up. I think he took the ball away, too. I don't know if they're going to give it to him or not. But If you look at it here, I think he did it while he was on top of it. Right. Well, it looks like they know who the, who the hot route is, and they're wow. bringing the hot player and jumping the route. Yep. That's it. I'll tell you once again, look at Wilkins peeling off the end. No, they just in, – in every week – he has two or three more blitzes that is dialed up to attack your protections. And I do think that was a turnover. They're not going to look at it, but. Well, they're gonna, yeah, I think they just, they just got buzzed. I think it's right. Prior to the clock expiring, timeout Clemson. The first, second time out of the half. Yeah. Please reset the They've game They've got the time out to, to try to make sure that six they review seconds. it. But if we look at it here. Oh, he took them all away. It's. It'd be 30 second timeout. I'll tell you, it's, that's going to be hard to overturn, though. It, it said momentum stop, possibly. Yeah. At what point did he take it out? All right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it was out. He, uh -huh. he got it, dude. That's why I'm not a replay official. Well, Paul is. Right. The only thing, really the only thing like you could possibly say is just for momentum stop, but I don't. I mean, this is, that's going to be He takes it out ball. of his hands. You know, just once again, great credit to, to this Clemson defense. I mean, wow. you, you, leave, you see, uh, I mean, just the way our guys are playing. Well, the other thing, that, that's a. Uh, a 225 pound, 230 pound linebacker running with a slot receiver. And that outside linebacker for Clemson, um, you know, that, that's Isaiah Simmons. And he's like their nickel, their Sam linebacker. That's two years in a row. They asked that position to fit inside gaps in the run game and cover slot receivers in the pass game. So he's a nickel at 235. Yes, and we're just he's running with receivers. <laughs> and you got you got Farrell that's running with it. You know, Farrell running with one of the most explosive backs in college football. You know, on right. the wheel route. I mean, that's, well, <laughs> they do a, they do a great job coaching on defense, but they've also got great players. I mean, it's uh, they I've can. Had it, I've had it both ways. It's easier to coach great <laughs> players. <laughs> I, I, really, I really worked at it both ways. Right. I coached as hard both ways, and I won a lot more games saying, good job, Vince. That, right. that was good, Brian. <laughs> that was nice. Oh, ooh, I like that. Yeah. Well, what's the old adage? Physical superiority cancels all theory. Yes. Yeah. Well, and team morale's good because you're beating people bad enough. Everybody plays. Your depth is better. I mean, it's not a, it's not a bad thing to have great players. Coach called timeout to challenge ruling on the field. Unfortunately, the ruling on the field was forward progress, which is not reviewable. Forward Therefore, progress. Clemson will not be charged a timeout. <laughs> There's a few Clemson fans there we can hear. I promise you, they're going to they're gonna travel. Oh, they got a long, long trip next week. Really long. Yeah. Well, and you think, and, and I guess the championship game was in Charlotte, so that wasn't too bad. But we put a lot of pressure on families now to go to a championship game, a playoff game, and a national championship. Well, I think with a new rule, they can pay for the families to go, right? And help. Yeah, I, I, I think it's tough for fans, to too. Yeah, fans more than fans. Book, more than book well, a flight to California on a week's notice. And it's, if you're not careful, not cheap. if you're not careful, I know when I was coaching at Georgia Southern and, and we got on a pretty good run there in the playoffs and the national championships, fans get spoiled. They wait for the championship game. No doubt. Because they, they can't go to all of them, so they... 
just assume you're going to be there every year and wait for that one. No, one year we, uh, all of our fans and the family and everybody had gotten tickets to the Fiesta Bowl. And then Kansas State upsets Oklahoma and we go to the Holiday Bowl by ourselves. <laughs> Nobody was going down there. They couldn't get tickets. It was way late. We're playing right. Washington State instead of Ohio State. And I thought um, Oklahoma had been bad to us, but never when they were playing somebody else. Why did they mess <laughs> us up? Uh, and, and, of course, the Texas fans thought the Oklahoma fans did it for, on purpose. There you go. They lost the championship just to mess us up. I said, yeah, they don't like us, but it, they don't hate you that bad. All right. I can tell you that. It'll be interesting to see how long the quarterback stays in the game. They'll, they'll play him fairly late. Yeah. Okay, the, for uh, fans just tuning in, here's uh, two big plays for Clemson. Uh, right at the end of the first half, which really changed this ball game completely. So uh, let's look at it. Well, th this is the uh, the bender against cover two we're going to see here. Right? Yes, you got yep. Hunter Renfro at the top. In the slot, and, and then it's the kind of a two-man, and he runs a hammer route on the safety that he looks like he's running the corner route. Corner. Which marries up with the hitch on the outside. Safety gets his feet to the outside, gets off balance. And then they're controlling for the other safety with the, with the corner route on, on the other side of the field, right. which really opens up the whole deep middle now, of the field. Can you draw that too, Dave? Yeah, it's just, you know, they're, they're, what they're doing is they're, they're trying to make it look like double smash. They're trying to make it look like the hitch in the corner and then on the other side, they're running the hitch in the corner, so they're clearing that safety out, and they're creating a one-on-one -on, -one on the free safety, who for Notre Dame is more of a flat-footed player. Three-man rush, no pressure. Yep, and it's just a great route. And right. what, what's really outstanding is how Renfro sells it. If you watch at the top of the route, it, it's not like he gives a, a one-step little head fake. It's three hard steps to the corner. But as a safety, you've got to break on that. And he's so quick. And that route's good against, you know, it's good against two highs, it's good against quarters, it's good against whatever because. Okay, now let's go to the touchdown because this led to the touchdown right before the half. Yeah, what, what's interesting on the touchdown is, you know, generally speaking in formations like this, that you're going to key that free safety. And so, um, so right now that player right there is telling the quarterback, hey, they're either doubling their X or you've got a one-on-one. -on -one. In the second, he steps to the middle of the field. They have their best receiver pressed with a one-on-one. -on -one. And so if you just watch Lawrence here, as soon as he sees that free safety come down, the ball immediately goes to the boundary, and you're taking a jump ball with a 6'4 receiver. Look how accurate he is. Look how quick he gets the ball out of his hands. Well, it's just also poised that if you notice once he sees the safety work over, he doesn't go over immediately. He just tries to freeze him for a fraction of a second to make sure there's no double on the backside X. So you just you watch that safety right now, and the second he steps down or does that, he knows he has the one-on-one. -on -one. Well, and the, the thing that he does, I think, so, you know, he doesn't always try to make the perfect throw. He gives the receivers a chance. One of, one of the things I always look at at a quarterback's feet. You can tell confidence in the feet of a quarterback. And this is a true freshman, uh, last play before the end of the half. And I mean, as he goes through his eye progression, stick that back foot in the ground, and uh, you deliver deliver a great ball. I mean, that's a, that's a young man that's confident, what they're, confident in what they're asking him to do. And, and give obviously. Debo credit, no again, for seeing that. Yeah, this and having is, the confidence to change right. with a senior quarterback that it, took him to a national championship. This is where also I think the development of their offensive line over the years allows them to play with a quarterback like this that they don't need to run it. And we'll now watch. here we go. Now we'll rush for 250 yards. Yeah. Well, they're beating them down. Now they're going to get their balance. A little different formation. Yeah. Well, and this is a lot of the backups in the game at yep. skill spot. And you know, just a small detail, but you still look at the look at the backer, look at 23. Uh, you know, st having to have eyes on the quarterback. You know, quarterback has done a great job in the run game. You know, throughout the game. Pass interference. Clemson was wanting it, of yeah. course. Looked like the offensive player kind of held off there. 
he's just so relaxed when he's making that throw. <laughs> so, really is. <laughs> it makes it look easy. And that's a that's a quarterback that has confidence in his O line. Here we go. Doing a great job controlling the perimeter. His, his eyes the whole time. You know, right. you got the field run, just reading the field adjuster. He comes to play run, take the take the perimeter the bubble. And some of the Notre Dame speed in the first quarter is not there right now. They're beaten down. They're tired. They're discouraged. They don't have they don't have the depth that Clemson has. They they their top line their top line guys could play anywhere, but they, they don't have the depth that Clemson has and. That's where all these receivers come some plays. It's the fourth quarter, and these kids are still fresh. And you continue to go back. I think I think Trevor Lawrence is neutralizing the speed. He's, he's adding the adding to the the indecision of where the ball's going. I mean, on the last play, the, the adjuster tries to fit faster the run. He's taking the bubble. They're having to redirect. Uh, you know, being able to operate and execute in in every phase here in the run game, the passing game. Definitely, I think the most impressive player on the on the field has uh, been this true freshman. And Mike Clemson slowed down a little bit, without no obviously slowing down. They're calling plays a little bit slower, killing a little more clock, and obviously those three-yard plays in the first quarter becoming eight. Yeah, and they're still snapping it with 13, 14 on the play clock, but but it's like you said, it's uh, you know, and I, at, sometimes I think defensively, especially when you get in a game like this and you ha you haven't had any success on offense. It's, it's tough for those kids to keep playing. They... Yeah, and, and Clemson still has their starting offensive line in. Right. And this is where, like you've mentioned, Coach, just the, the, the physical dominance here late in the game of those guys being able to take over. It's you know, that's Because Notre Dame, even in a situation where you would think it would be a must, right. more must run, they're still playing a too high look because cause Lawrence is taking the perimeter throws. He's, he's forcing them to account for him, and now, now the big guys up front are getting the one-on-one -on -one blocks and doing a great job with that. And that's your pounding. You've already gone from 30 yards rushing to 151 or 100 and, what's yeah, 151 same? yards. Yeah, so they're fast. definitely headed for 500 yards. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you're beating Notre Dame down. I don't think there was any way that Notre Dame had a chance to win the game. Losing the turnover battle. No. Yeah, they had they had to they had to capitalize. They had to right. get the ball, get the game to the fourth quarter, and you know missing out on some of the the, the explosive the explosive plays. Obviously, Clemson hitting right. the explosive plays. It's just and I'm not sure what the time of possession is to this point in the game, but it's got to be pretty heavily uh, for Clemson. Well, and Kirk Herbstreit said this morning that for Notre Dame to win, they had to take care of the ball, and Ian Book had to play out of his mind. Right. And that's hard to do against this Clemson defense. They're, Clemson's <laughs> defensive line makes it very hard for any quarterback to play out of their mind. They do. You can play out of your mind, but on the bad side, right? Well, they've <laughs> done this to a lot of people. They're not the only no. only team they've done the, it to. Their average margin of win this year, I think, was around 35 points. Yeah. Tell me about tonight. Oklahoma, Alabama. You know, I what think, think? It's, uh, well, I don't think that uh, Alabama can hold Oklahoma to three. No. Uh, but uh, I think everything would have to go, go right for Oklahoma to win the game, and they need to get a couple of turnovers. That's going to be the key. I think if they could win the turnover battle, uh, I think Oklahoma will score some points. But, uh, you know, they're going to have a hard time, I think, dealing with Alabama skilled people as well. That receiving core may be better than Clemson's. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't know that Alabama has a weakness. I haven't watched them as much as Clemson. But what, I have. what little bit I've seen them, I don't. I don't know that they have a weakness. I don't. I think extra point and field goal. Right. <laughs> they they've missed some extra points and some field goals. Other than that, none. I don't know if they're as good on defense as they've been in the past. But they but don't have to be. But they don't have to be. They're no. so much better on offense. Yeah, Dave. What do you think tonight? I'll be honest with you. I have no idea. You haven't watched them. No. You've I been mean, you, you know, when you're coaching games, your right? team. You know, you're, I, I don't think I've watched a game of Oklahoma or Alabama all year. Uh, it'll be the first time tonight. So I had 24 games every Saturday, so I got to see a lot of them. Mike? <laughs> uh, you know, that, that, I got a chance to watch Alabama a few times just in crossover games, and, and they're, they're a special group. Uh, you know, you, you see the, the speed, uh, like Coach mentioned about the receivers, you know, the big, big, strong physical up front, a quarterback that can, that can make it all happen. 
uh, you know, Oklahoma special on offense and do some great things. You know, but uh, yeah, they're going to have to create takeaways. They're going to have to you know get the extra possessions for their offense, and that's going to be a challenge. And now every time Clemson's handing it off, they're getting four to six. Yeah, eight now to... it's in, in Notre Dame there is in cover zero. They're outnumbering the box by two and, yeah. and still, still can't get you them. outrun two people and get a first down. And this is where the time of possession, you know, the, those two linebackers for Notre Dame, I believe, have played every snap. And Tranquil's on special teams. Yeah. And it's just... They're just steadily running the offense. I mean, there it is with the run pass. You know, the adjuster, outside linebacker, they got the 4 3 defense fit in the box. You got the one on one with the out route. Uh, it shows a lot of the confidence of, the, of this Clemson coaching staff to, to continue to put it in 16's hands. And, you know, he's playing, he's playing like, a, like a veteran right now. And, and that's how they manage their formations. Wherever you bring that extra hat, they have a perimeter answer. Look complicated and be simple. And just for good measure, throw a screen out there, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> tendency those, breakers. Those just, are to, just, just to give them something else. To think about. That's for tendency breakers. But they, yeah. They're working on Alabama now. They're, they got a few things they got to put in for Alabama to work on. And that clock is running so fast now. It is running downhill. Yeah, they're, they're not milking it yet, though. They're still, like Paul said, snapping it with 10, 8 seconds. There's a little rub route. Notice so rub. You the field goal now? Yes, yeah, you yeah, you're a rub right. route, not a pick route. Offensive guy. I think so do you kick the field goal here, or do you go for no, four? I think, I think you go for it. I think you go for it. Just to try to run right. the clock down exactly. some more. Right. Just clock. Take another two, three Clock's minutes more off. more important than the points. Bleed the clock. <clears throat> and even if you don't get it, it's 82 yards to go. Mm. They're running a little more clock every time, too. They're down to nine, eight, seven. Nice foot zone. Quarterback. Well, they had a chance to stop it, they? Yep. Again, tired arms. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah, I had an unblocked guy right at the point of attack. I, I tell you what, though, it's, you know, the, the, the shame about these games is Notre Dame had a heck of a season. They really did. They really did. I mean, it's, we've played both these teams, and, I mean, just playing Notre Dame last year to this year, the jump and the improvements that they made were, uh, I mean, really the last two years. There's, uh, there's Dabo's son. It's got to be fun. There we go. It's a completion. <laughs> yep. Still throwing the ball. Yeah. Man. Still throwing the ball. And I've got to ask Dabo if he was better than his son. It'll be uh, no. Maybe I should ask the son. <laughs> ask him. Uh, do you watch any of Dad's film? He'd probably say it's in black and white. So I couldn't <laughs> see it. It was. It was. It was not video, it was film. I don't have to. Three of the four of us here can't make any comment on that. No. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. If you really want to know, you'd have to ask. Oh, oh, oh. Uh -oh. wow. Let Picked me... it up. Dabo will have something there to coach go. on there. something there to go. coach. But they're up. Uh, that's ETN, too. Yeah, that's ETN. He so up, can't do up that. 27 in the fourth. And, and, and these are the plays that Notre Dame needed, you know. Early, right. early in the game that, uh, and, you know, but you see kids still playing hard, still playing with effort. Well, Brown's this, done an unbelievable job. Oh. And he's, he's got strong academic requirements, and for, for them to, some people will be critical because of their BCS games. They'll be critical because of the national championship 2012. They have had one great year from they, where they started. They won some, I mean, the, that Michigan game they won early, and, I mean, they, they beat us good. They're, they were a good football team. And it's just, it's hard to be perfect. Yeah, it really is. And they beat, they beat everybody who trotted out in front of them. Mm -hmm. 
I remember and that's it, all you can do. You, you do. I remember at Texas when we won all but one, they said they can't win the big one. <laughs> uh, and then after you won that one, they said you got to do it all the time now. Right. You're going to do it. So first you couldn't win away on the road, couldn't win at home, couldn't win on the road. Then you got that done. Then you got to win them all. And then when you win them all, you got to win them all every year. Right. That's just kind of where Notre Dame is right now, and that's the expectation. But they've, they've done a tremendous job. The truth is that, that right, right now probably – uh, Alabama and Clemson have more talented players than everybody else. And you look at Kyler Murray tonight, can he do enough uh, to score enough points and their defense force enough turnovers? Because Alabama's right. not a turnover ridden team. Can he score enough points to, to keep them in this thing and have a chance to win? Because the defensive players at Oklahoma aren't as good as the defensive players at, at Alabama. No. And their corners, those receivers are freakish when they start looking at Alabama's speed on the outside. And, and they, they've got length, they've got speed, they've got strength. Uh, what about to his ankle? He says 80, 85%. Uh, does it matter? Uh, can he run? Then you got Jalen that comes in and, and steps in there immediately and makes plays. But I think it'll be really fun to watch Kyler Murray against the Alabama defense tonight because he has answered every question this year. And I didn't know if he could. He didn't play much last year. But how about Lincoln Riley, two Heisman Trophy quarterbacks, two years in a row, and those guys are scoring 50 points a game and just running up and down the field. It's, it's you know, unbelievable it, what it, he's done. It was funny. Uh, you know, uh, we actually got together as staffs with Oklahoma uh, before last year, and Baker Mayfield's, you know, going to do great things, was a returning starter. And, you know, I was talking to, to Kel Gundy, the OC at Oklahoma, and he goes, you know, it's amazing is that we've got a backup quarterback that, you know, is really – He's in position where he could go and start at any other program in the country. Um, you know, he's an elite player, but he's playing behind a Heisman Trophy winner. And, and he stayed. He kept his mouth shut. And, and the, interestingly, too, both were transfers. Oh, it's a, Baker Mayfield transferred and walked on, and Kyler Murray transferred in from A&M. Well, you know, it's, they've, done a, they've done a nice job of, of uh, you know, utilizing the skills of, of the talent that they have. And, yeah, this is now where it, it – when you become one-dimensional yep. against these guys, <clears throat> good luck. And, and now Clemson is subbing some people, and this is really where you get to see their depth. Yeah, well, they're fresh. Mm -hmm. And, here's well, seven, and this is seven-man protection. And, they're, and they're still really talented. I'm trying to find number five on the depth chart. He's not listing the three deep. And he's eager. Yeah. <laughs> he gets to play. Mama gets to watch him. There's a, a quarterback still playing hard, though. Yep. I mean, if you watch this play, Ian Buck, you'd never guess that this is a 27-point game in the fourth quarter. No, we hired Greg Robinson at Texas from the Kansas City Chiefs, and he brought in a playoff game where they were down 14 points, and he showed the last three plays of the game, and they tried as hard the last three plays of the game as they did the first three plays of the game, and I thought it, it sent such a message that you are who you are. And it sends a message to everybody else in the team that here's a sophomore quarterback that scraping and going hard and doing everything he can for one more yard. And it, yep. it sets him up as a returning starter now to be a really effective leader. And diving for the first down, even though he didn't make it. And, and, it, and it's, it, it's really shown the, the, the culture that's been established there at Notre Dame and why they've, why they've won every game, why they're quality. You know, it's the, the team chemistry, the, the fight, the response. I mean, there's been, there's been adversity that's shown up throughout this season. And you know, these guys have, have done a great job of finishing. And, even though it looks like today's not going to work out there, uh, you know, the way they want it. I mean, these guys are, are going to compete to the very end. Here it is, though. Up 20, uh, Wilkins is still in the game. Right. And they can play him because they have depth. He's still fresh. Uh, and that's the thing that's, you know, it's kind of scary when you think about it, is they're playing without one of the best defensive players today. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and they've been, they've been dominant. They've been dominant defensively. Uh, so the question of whether... Dexter Lawrence was a real negative and a game changer in this game. Probably wasn't as big a factor as everybody worried no, about going the, in. The right Lawrence showed up. Yeah. If yeah. you had to lose one, they're both great players. Uh, you had a little more depth there probably. Oh. Oh. What a shot. Everybody's covered. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, this I'm is... tell you, if you go back, coach, you, know, you look at this. You look at once again an empty five man five man protection. Look at the uh, look at the rush of, of Clemson. They're bringing two one guy. It's a one man pass rush. This is great film. This is great preparation by their staff. One man pass rush and, and it's dropping and, ten. And, and the key is is if you go back there, the 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 end rushes far enough to draw the tackle. No question. Okay. Yeah, and that's the hardest thing to coach and teach on that is those kids who are dropping want to get out so quickly that a lot of times they never draw the block. And that's you we'll know, go to, back to it. That's a great point. To, to be able to attack protections, yeah, that's one of the things that you know, even in a in a five man pro. So it's, it's it's right here that he's dropping and he knows he's dropping, but he doesn't drop until he's engaged the tackle. So they know they have a boundary slide that the offensive line is all sliding to the boundary. There's the hot, and he draws him long enough to have him come free. And, and that takes discipline on the D-line to do that. Prior to the snap, false start, offense over 21, five yard penalty. Yeah, got to keep your focus, keep working, give us 6.59, man. Right, and that clock can't run fast enough for either team. No. No, it's time to go home. <laughs> everybody, everybody. <laughs> Mamas are ready to have it over. Right. Officials are ready to have it over. Coaches are ready to have Coaches it over. Coaches are ready to have it over. They've already said, okay, I got you. Uh, I, I understand. Right. Hand me the hat, Cotton Bowl champs. Yeah. And they might and, have and, enough um, time to put the Clemson logo on them. Mm-hmm. And are not right that Clemson will make their fourth trip to the national championship in four years? Uh, they lost in the uh, semis. Oh, they, they lost in the semis Some, once. That's to right. Alabama. To Alabama. Yeah, that's right. Years ago. That's right. If you so. take this play back, this is this is something for all young players. You look at this punt. You got Drew Tranquil at the right guard position. You've got uh, uh, Wilkins coming off the edge. Watch effort. Yeah. This is thirty to three. Exhausted. You know these guys are battling to the very end, and that's you know so many you know that young man is going to have an incredible future in the NFL, right? But. You, the reason why is because the effort he's willing to give on a special teams play when the game is really you know pretty much out of reach their you know their mindset can start to go a little bit to the national championship game but you know every play matters yeah. and that's what NFL scouts are going to see that's what's uh, you know makes him the great player that he is and, and and all these young you know young guys that are coming into to playing college football that's what sets you apart because everybody wants to be great but who's willing to put it on film uh, and now Dabo knows the game's over he's putting in all twos. Well, and, and the guy that's doing the uh, calling the game, he's reaching for the program now. Yep, <laughs> yep. There's no question. Or you're changing tendencies for Alabama. All right. What about Tua? We've talked about Tua this year. Uh, we talked about Kyler Murray for tonight. Uh, Coach Saban had a really difficult decision to make in preseason. Everybody was saying, "How do you pull a guy out at 26 and two or whatever he was?" And then we go to to. Two is the quarterback, and he's been unbelievable. Been as good as anybody we've seen. So, what happens with him tonight? You no, know, uh, obviously, you know, his his health and uh, and the the mobility that he's going to be able to show with the with the foot injury, uh, that's going to be a big key to the game. But I'm sure Alabama's probably slept pretty good at night, knowing they got Jalen Jalen Hurts sitting there right. in, the, in the wing just in case. But uh, I mean, you know, he's a special player, though. Just the, I think the story of this season with both these teams is. You know, how unselfish some of these kids were. I mean, how many kids of Clemson could have came out last year and they wanted to come back and win a national championship? Jalen Hurts, I mean, probably nine out of ten times that quarterback lead. And for him to come back and lead him to the SEC championship, to me, was a great lesson for our football team. Well, and and trying, he didn't even just want to play in four games. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, he, he, was, he didn't care. He came back and he was all in. And, uh, He's a reason that they're in the position they are tonight. Absolutely. And if uh, Tua gets hurt, they've got a guy who's very experienced, just won a conference championship, played for a national championship that uh, the kids believe in, getting ready to come in. And right. he's handled himself with incredible class every step on the, along the way. Yeah, he's from a coaching family, uh, so he was raised right. Um, and even this week, when they try to get him to address questions about transferring, he, he never ever took the bait. Yeah, they're really impressive. You That's, mean media would try to get you to <laughs> take the bait? So you're you media. Can, you're now, media. Now, now, no, you're media. You today. can now you be critical of media because you flip sides. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you're they, back with us. They asked me if I was going to be paranoid and rude since I was going back <laughs> to the bad side, and I said, "Well, they think you're the bad side," so I get confused now. I got friends on both sides. <laughs> 
But now you slow it down. Oh. Now you run the ball. Now you kill the clock. Now you get home. And it's amazing how those second guys, third guys, when you put them in, they have an opportunity to play, and they haven't played very much. Right. They play so hard. Uh, uh, these, these guys have yeah. played a lot. Well, they have. You're right. <laughs> You're right. There's been a lot of games. That, <laughs> the this, is one of the, this is one of their smaller leads in the fourth quarter yeah. this year. So these guys are usually on the bench by now, and the third group is in. Which is just so impressive, the dominance that they've shown. And, and like you said, just the development of, of the depth throughout, throughout the season. This is, this is a, it's a special, special team. Yeah, and they're just. And you can see here they, they're still snapping the ball with 15 left. I mean, I know they, they're trying to score with this group. You know, and, and that's you, you always tell you know tell kids that you got to be ready when your number's called. And these are this is the, the opportunity they can show that they're ready and that they can they deserve more playing time. And, you know, I think it's amazing. A lot of these kids, you know, at the receiver and tight end skill positions have, like like Coach mentioned, have played a, played a lot of football this year. And so they they want to see their name in the paper as well. And this was always tough. It was tough for me, and we just said it right here. But Yeah, but Notre Dame is, you know, pe people are going to say, hey, why are they throwing the ball? But Clemson's running their offense. Yeah, exactly. Notre Dame is exactly. presenting a look that in Clemson's offense dictates that they throw the ball. Yeah, one thing that I didn't do a good job of is when we were way ahead, I didn't let the second-team quarterback throw, and that's unfair to him. It was unfair to the, the other kids on the team and and and. I did the same thing, Matt. I wouldn't let us. <laughs> Whether you were ahead or behind, you didn't let yours throw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody's ever criticized you for throwing to run it up. <laughs> Worst thing for you is you Just kept doing what it. you were doing and killing people with it. We, uh, when I was at Tulane, we were playing Georgia. Coach mm -hmm. Dooley was the head coach, and they had Henderson and Worley as running backs that were bigger than our defensive linemen. And I, I watched before the game, they were working on the wishbone, and I said to one of our coaches, what are they doing? I said, Coach, they got Auburn next week. <laughs> so they're not, they're not worried In about Tulane. Yeah. And then Coach Dooley didn't know who I was, so he had to get the football ops guy to find me. So he said, which one is their head coach oh. down there? <laughs> and they pointed me out. And then uh, there you go. That's the uh... – and the worst thing Coach Dooley did is he quit throwing and started running straight ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they beat us 69-3 to three or something. That uh, was the same ball they threw uh, against Syracuse on fourth down to, to, to win the game. Yeah, to, to lead to the game-winning drive. Well, that quarterback won the state championship at Grayson High School. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's not bad either. He's not bad well, either. And, and we should also brag on Wimbush. Yeah, no question. He has been a, um, a super teammate. He's bragged on Ian Book. He is transferring, but he, he also has done everything within his power to help him win games this year. And that's and that's something that, you know, it gets overlooked you know, throughout the throughout the, the season, you know, the the stories of guys that, you know, face the adversity and how they respond to it. And you know, it's a it's impressive. And you know, if you see anything in the media, you know, he didn't he wouldn't comment on it this week. Uh, you know, that's that's always tough for a for a young man. Uh, you know, when he's put in adverse adverse circumstance, but to, to handle himself with class and you know, be a part of an undefeated uh, undefeated season to make it to the to the playoffs. Uh, a lot of credit goes out to that young man and this team. You know, something else I think that really helps Clemson and Alabama in playoff scenarios is they've been here so much. They know how to practice. They know how to prepare for the games. And if it's new to you, it's, it's more difficult because it's different. Right. And you've got more time off now between now and the national championship game. You, you've got January 1. The kids got to stay out of trouble when they go home. And, you know, you, how long do you let them stay? When you bring them back, how much different do you practice? Have you been working on Alabama because you've played them so much the last three or four years? Right. Have you got a, a year scouting report on Alabama? Uh, so it's a, there are a lot of things that. Uh, well, I'm they, sure that they have enough staff. They have enough staff. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> they have enough. They I have think enough Alabama's staff. got 107, so yeah. they. And if, Clemson, if, Clemson's okay. not far behind. No, so pushing, pushing pretty close. If yeah, Coach they, Saban could know all the names of his personnel, I'd, that'd be really interesting <laughs> to test. Yeah. I think with both of those teams, though, they they really go into the season anticipating that it'll be this long. Oh, and, and you, we talk about the the quarterback move. Uh, you know, Clemson had played right. really well up until that point, had a couple close games. But that, the, the quarterback move to put Lawrence in 
you know, midway through the season was for tonight, was for yeah, this opportunity I, I think to build it was, him. I think it was for next week. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's no, where uh, you see the confidence which right. a true freshman plays with in a, in a, in a big game. Uh, he's a, you, know, you, you go through this, he was the MVP. Well, and we, we talked about Lincoln Riley. Here's a guy, two years in coaching, two playoffs. Right. Already, and he, he, he loses in, uh, in overtime last year. Two. So, yeah, what, what gets overlooked a little bit in with, a Rose Bowl. with right. Clemson season, though, is if Kelly Bryant doesn't play the way that he plays against Texas A&M in the fourth quarter. That's exactly right. They may not be here right now. And, well, and even though he made a decision to leave, He's part of the reason that they're in this position as well. And this the season's so long, think about Notre Dame against uh, Vanderbilt. Oh. If Vanderbilt makes that play late in the game to the tight end, they mm-hmm. may not be here now too. But, yeah, but, but Lincoln it, Riley, even though he took over a great team from Bob Stoops, you got to give him a lot of credit for managing that team. And a lot of those coaches weren't his. And he had to make some hard decisions this year too. Hard decisions. U- utilizing the personnel. And that's something that, you know, it's – you have back-to-back Heisman Trophy winners at, at the same position. Yeah. I mean, but that, that's that's kind of easy to, see. to recruit quarterbacks. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you want to be a Heisman winner? Come see me. I mean, but then, but then with that, the things that they've had to do, you know, defensively, and, and some of the things that they've that they've, you know, some of the adjustments that have shown up. It's okay. hard to win a college football game, and, and these these teams have, have earned the right to to be on this stage. All right, um, let me ask you another question: Is it? Good or bad for college football that Alabama and Clemson are better than the other teams uh, in in most cases. Maybe Oklahoma wins tonight. Right. We're not saying that's over, but Alabama and Clemson have been better for the last four or five years than everybody else. Is that good or bad, Paul? I, I, I don't think it's good for, for college football because I think the one thing that autonomy has done, the haves have gotten even further away from, from the middle of the pack or the have-nots. and. And all things aren't created equal. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, the amount of money that, that they spend on the program. And, and that's not their fault because they can do it. And, and that's what autonomy was about, more power to them. But it separates, uh, you know, I, I think that realistically, you know, there's probably 10 to 12, maybe 15 programs that just financially and the way that they support it are just – Light years ahead of everybody else right now. Dave, good or bad? I mean, that's not an easy answer. I would say this, that those two right now are the gold standard, and schools have to decide, is that what they want to become? And uh, and the commitment level they've made in all aspects, that uh, if if that's where you want to be and play in these games, that's the commitment level you have to make. Yeah, some people say... uh, why be critical of the ones that have decided to be so much right. better, uh, try to get as good as they are instead of be critical of them? What do you think, Mike? Well, you know, you, you see the blueprint. You know, you talk about the consistency of how these teams are, are, are playing and they're playing at elite level. But they're, they're also consistent in the commitment to continuing to grow, to support the, support the program. Um, you know, they're recruiting at, at an elite level, which, you know, we've talked about the, the great players that have shown up. Well, uh, this is the only – the only league talking about college football where you know there there's it's not set up for the the lower level teams to get the best players you look at the nfl draft you look at uh, your nba it's always you know if you if you finish last you get the best player or the choice set up here you you have to recruit you have to to provide the, an opportunity to to attract that player with not playing with the same resources sometimes all right another question mike really interesting question for the rest of us ucf you had two <laughs> tough games with them. You were ahead. But I'm not going. I'm not going to go. That's, that's a dirty, that's a dirty no, no, no. word here that's, talking that's, to me. That's let me tell not you. where we're headed. Uh, can they beat LSU? Uh, I think they can. Will they beat LSU? You know, I've noticed that LSU has a couple of players that have that have uh, elected not to play. And and I'll tell you this: regardless who have, who have showed up uh, across the field from UCF over the last two years, they found a way. And uh, we played them. We played them four times. In three of the games, we had halftime leads and. Um, you know, it was that team has, has done something special, and uh, they've had great coaches, done a remarkable job. But you know, the players that step between the white lines, and then they've 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 really done a done a nice job of how they respond in any situation. And you know, uh, I, I can promise you, I'm not going to take any trips to Disney World this this year. I'm staying away from Orlando as long as I can. But uh, you know, it's a it's 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 an impressive group, and that's why you want to see those guys have an opportunity. Uh, last year, not many people gave them, gave them a chance against Auburn, and uh, you know, they showed that they belonged. And this year, they're going to get a, a very talented LSU group, and 
Uh, you know, I put nothing past uh, past that uh, that program and, and those guys they have in it. Okay, another question. Power Five, Group of Five. I felt like that it would be better for Power Five to have their own national championship, have their own Heisman Trophy winner, have their own awards, and it separates because right now the way the system is set up with the schedules the way they are, and they're very difficult to change when you've got conference alignments, it's very difficult for a team in the Power Five to get in the playoff, much less, therefore, win a national championship. What do you think being one of the top coaches in the group of five? You know, I mean, I, I believe in, in, in our, our teams, our players. You know, I think that, you know, the oper- I don't want to see a separation because, you know, our guys believe that, that, uh, that we can compete at a, at a very high level. You know, you look at, you know, last year you had opportunity to beat UCLA, you know, uh, you know Ole Miss, you know, things that have shown up in, in our time. Um, you know, that separation is good for a recognition that you're maybe the best of, of this level. But uh, you, you look at the NFL draft, I mean, we've had we've been one of the top conferences, uh, you know, even including Power Five leagues uh, and putting guys at that level. But and, that being said... And your champion winning every game for two years, they're still not in the playoff. And that's something that I would rather see it adjusted to where we have a chance to compete against the elite, when against that. When you say it's separate, are you saying that you don't even play each other anymore? No, no, no. Okay. I say keep keep the the games as they are, keep the schedules like they are. But if we're, as as a college football playoff committee, if with scheduling like it is right now and you have to schedule your conference games and you're not going to have a good enough schedule, therefore be rated high enough to get in the playoff, is that fair? I think when you separate it, 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 uh, it makes the student athlete view it differently. I mean, I, you know, we've competed against Ed Oliver the last three years. Ed Oliver is one of the best players in college football. He made the choice to represent his hometown, to go to that school, you know, knowing that he would have big stages to be able to, to play on and compete. Uh, you know, Daryl Henderson this year was a consensus All-American, our running back. And, uh, you know, the fact that, that you know, I, don't, I would hate to see a separation that would deter a kid from, from going to the best fit for himself because he didn't feel like he would be included at, 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 the, at an elite level. What about playoff? Are we good with four? You know, I've, I said from the very beginning, I, I think that, that they should go uh, to eight at least, and then that way you give those teams a chance to play. And what I would do is I would take the, the conference champions of the Power Five, whoever's the highest ranked group of five team, and then two wild cards and seed it one through eight and, and let them have a chance because it's really not, not fair to a Central Florida or whatever to beat everybody they play and not get a chance. Now, do I think they would win? I don't I don't think so, but you, they deserve a chance. They've earned that. Yeah. You, you never know how teams are going to finish at the, at the end of the season. You get hot, you get on a roll, you've yep. got a special player, right. a special quarterback. Uh, you see it every year in the, in college basketball as, as teams get, get – get rolling late I mean it there's there sometimes there is a special team that, that well they've done everything they could do they've won 24 games in a row or 26 uh, they deserve a chance yeah. and, and it, you know it's pretty clear that if you've won 26 in a row and you're not in yeah I, no I, I agree that was my point yeah. more than anything else uh, we have a, a team in the national championship Clemson very impressive did everything right played a great Notre Dame team we weren't sure going into the game who would win we thought it would be a very close game and Clemson dominated. Now, one more time, we're getting ready to go to Herm and the B team. Uh, what do you think about tonight? Very quickly. Uh, I think it'd be hard to, to pick against Alabama. If Oklahoma catches lightning in a bottle, I think they have a chance. I think they can score some points, but I don't know that they can score enough unless they get some turnover. But kind of like this one. They got to do everything Eric, right to win. Got, they right? got to get some breaks, I think. Be hot, they they got to get some breaks. I mean, can Oklahoma get stops? Yeah, and, and stops mean turnovers, turnovers fourth down, uh, right. missed field, missed goal. field goals, anything. Yeah. Find ways of getting off the field without giving up points. Yeah, Mike, that's the whole key. You know, Oklahoma, you know, creating the explosive play on defense. We all know that they're capable of it offensively, um, but you, that's got to show up big for them to, so to have a chance to win. So at it. this table, we think it's going to be Alabama Clemson rematch. I think everybody thought that in August, huh? Yeah, I'm afraid so. That's yeah. what we're just yeah. talking about with this. So. Um, Guys, it's, uh, you did a great job. I hope our, our fans enjoyed it, learned a lot. It was uh, fun. I learned that I didn't want to play Clemson. Uh, <laughs> I thought I knew that coming into the game, but you guys were hey, so hey, helpful. I, you know, I, I know you oh, won. No, 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 no. But you know what? No. You guys have done a marvelous job. 
But guess what? Those seats are only rented. The B yeah. team. for the A team to come the up in here. <laughs> come ready to go, coach. Yes. Ready to go, coach. Yes. Good job, man. Good, Good job. job. Good 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 job.